the stage is set now for the 1979 Winfield TFL Grand Final. Umpires Manson and Clements in charge of the big one. Robbie Dykes is lined up at centre-half forward for the Magpies. Ian Bremner did not take his place in the side. Here's the first bounce. A capacity crowd here at North Hobart in Peter Hudson's farewell game. There's the centre bounce. Up goes Bennett opposed to Pilkington. Pilkington wins the first tap. Goes down towards Chadwick. Weaves his way through the pack. Scrambles a kick up towards Moorcroft. Strong tackle on Moorcroft. Free kick. And Gary Linton will take the free kick out of the centre for the Magpies. Perfect conditions for football. Bright sunny skies at the moment with a big kick by Linton. Crowded play. Up and over the back there. Punched away. Picked up there by Ling with a left footer up towards the half forward line. Woodham is there but so too is Doyle. Doyle using his pace. Works his way in front of Hudson. Hand passes out there towards Trippett. Trippett with a kick up towards the centre wing on the right street side of the ground. Almost a mark to Vic Pilkington. Coming into assist there. Handball out towards Linton. Linton sidesteps. His kick is smothered. Plenty of pressure in it in the opening seconds of the TFL Grand Final. Down towards Axel there. Goes for a hand pass. Kicking it towards goal. Offline. A point only. So the opening score of the match. A point. Kicked by uh, Danny Ling. The uh, Glenorchy Rover. One behind. One point. Clarence yet to score. Bob Cheek. What a tremendous atmosphere here at North Hobart. You couldn't wish for a better atmosphere. It's uh, like the VFL. A mini VFL. The crowd are uh, ecstatic. They've had got cheer squads, banners, streamers, and uh, everything you need, all the ingredients for a great game, and let's hope the footballers out on the ground can go on with it. They're certainly keen and desperate. That's obvious from the opening minute. We see Chris Spalding now putting the ball back into play, a nice long drop punt kick. Big fellows up, Pilkington taps down. Picked up by Robbie Dykes, playing at centre-half forward for the Magpies. A kick in towards Hudson. Can't take it. Over the back comes Timmy Wood in the chance if he can pick up. He does, turns round, hooks it back on the left foot. Out of bounds. Out of bounds before Tim Woodham uh, got that kick. He had the chance to pick up, but a little bit slow. And it was over the boundary line before he could hook it back on the left foot. So we're going to see a throw in right near the right hands behind post. There it is, Bennett up with Pilkington. Down a come, free kick played, and it's going to go to Clarence's rover, Rod Hughes. From the back pocket, Rod Hughes will drive the ruse out of trouble. He goes up the wing, Pilkington under the ball, spills a sitter, goes on with play, used his pace, a lot of pace for a big fellow. Pilky drives into the square, there's Hudson underneath it, but chipping in, Robin Norris pulls down a great saving mark for Clarence. It was going straight for uh, Peter Hudson's chest, but Robin Norris chipping in, pulled it down beautifully. Here's Norris taking the kick now, out of the back line, up towards the uh, centre square. And the mark has been taken there by Greg French. Greg French has taken the mark. Here's his kick, up over the uh, centre of the ground. A Clarence mark for mine, taken by Rewalt. Here's Rewalt. He'll drive the ruse deep into attack with a drop putt up towards the uh, half-forward line. Crowded play, they appeal for the mark. Umpire Manson lets it go, he's found a free kick. And the free kick will go to the Magpie fullback in Steve McCann. And the big crowd here don't like that. But McCann has the ball at centre half back with a punt kick. Chance for Mackay. And Mackay, who was so brilliant last week, has taken the mark on the chest. Puts in a short one up towards the centre half forward position. Picked up there by Moorcroft. Down he goes. Round Free kick. Down. Neil Moorcroft with the ball. Putting in a short one. It's going to come off too. And he's found Kelly. Rod Kelly there on the half forward line directly in front. A good uh, 45 to 50 metres out. And a chance to bring up the first major score of the match. It's swinging away. A point only. So scores are now dead level. One behind one point at about the two and a half minute mark of the first quarter. Steve McCann kicking out for Glenorchy. Goes for a long one. Spiral punt kick. A good one too. Up very high was Giffard. Nearly pulled it down. Not quite. The chance for Greg French. He's got the ball in front of him pursued by Thurgood. French hooks the ball back. But straight onto the chest of Donnie Holland. The Glenorchy Rover steadying play. With plenty of instructions from teammates where to kick it. He goes out wide for young Scott Lamont. Look to get one in the back. Play on, says the umpire. The chance now to pick up here by Kim Axel. Axel kicks into the centre of the ground. Poor kick as far as Glenorchy were concerned. It's going straight onto the chest of Tony Chadwick. Chadwick driving up to centre half forward looking for Van der Feen. Coming through Franks, he's grabbed quickly. Free kick against uh, Rod Franks. And it's going to go to Rod Kelly. Pretty prominent early in the game, Rod Kelly. Here's his kick up towards Garlic. Over the, over the back it goes. 
coming through strongly to clear for uh, Glenorchy and put them out of trouble, but it's out of bounds on the fall. Free kick. And the free kick is going to go to Michael Tyson of Clarence. As Tyson driving the ball in. Big pack up, gift part up, very high, couldn't pull it down. The chance struggled forward. Chance for Clarence now for Kelly. He's on the ground, can't get up and uh, put it through. Craig Martin in there also. And the umpire will bounce. Umpire Gary Clemens putting the ball up right in the teeth of goal for Clarence. Up high, Revolt. Price to put it over the back, breaking through. Martin's grabbed. Eventually picked up by Giffard. He's heavily filled around the next as the umpire and a free kick. And Clarence have a golden opportunity through Shane Giffard to put the first goal of the match on the board. Shane Giffard only 10 metres out directly in front. And he should not miss this. Going back a long way from his mark. Coming in the kick now. There it is. Looks good. Yes. First goal on the board. And Clarence opening well. Now go to 1-1-7. One, one, and Glenorchy one point. And Shane Giffard is certainly prominent early in the game. He's been up high for a couple of big marks. Couldn't quite pull them down. But there was desperation alone that got him that free kick. And he hasn't let his side down. He's Great been start. one of the real stars of the Clarence side over the latter part of the season. Shane Giffard. A real goer and a big future predicted for him. Back into the centre. Clarence, 1-1-7. One, one, They're a goal in front of the Magpies. Here's the bounce. Pilkington going for it this time. Goes up. Gets it down there towards Ling. Ling, a strong tackle on Ling. He tried to get rid of it, says the umpire. Out towards Tyson. He handballs the ball away from him. It's out towards the boundary line. Litton's got it. He's met solidly over the boundary line. Down he goes. Picked up by Hughes. Scrambles it up towards the half-forward line. Picked up by Garlic. Garlic screwing it back over the shoulder. Down towards centre-half forward. They fly high. Killing for the mark was Giffard. No. Picked up again by Garlic. Slams it in towards goal. Close. One point. One point. So the Roos having the best of the opening minutes of the first quarter. They've been an attack for most of the uh, opening minutes. And they move on to 1 2 8. Glenorchy one behind, one point. We've played about six minutes. And here's the kickoff from fullback by Mark Johnson. Mark Johnston now going right down the middle. Punched to Vaughan by Pilkenden, gives a chance now coming in for Donny Holland. Can't handle the ball very well, eventually picks up, runs into a wall of Clarence players, but gets his kick out the half-forward flank. Up high, Jeff Doyle pulls down a great mark over John Miles. Much improved player, Jeff Doyle. The bearded dasher back there on the half-back line. Is his left foot kick underneath it. Glorky Curley should have taken the mark, dropped a setter. Play goes on, a handball coming out to Martin, eventually comes out to Giffard again. Linton comes in to intercept. Around, grabbed by the foot, says the umpire, and Gary Linton gets the free kick quickly, almost play up the half four line. Kim Axel from behind, up high. Leary, experience, out towards Treffitt. Shepherded by Doyle. Pilton using his weight coming through. Glorky comes, uh, kicks blocked. Over Whoa. the boundary line, it's on over there already. Pilton shoving the player out of the way, not too much in. Does the umpires come in to uh, restore order? And we see the result of that, the ball has gone down and it's three for one behind. So while everybody's worrying about the fight, play goes on and it's a point to Glenorchy. Glenorchy now two points, Clarence one, two, eight, and that breeze seems to have freshened a little bit. It seems to be blowing down uh, towards Glenorchy's goal. Here's the kickoff now by Spalding. Yes, the Magpies will have to put in a big first quarter because that breeze, they're kicking with it at the moment. Great mark out there by Buffy Triffitt. Oh, Cox one for his corner too. 15 metre penalty against Glenorchy. 15 metre penalty and Bumpy Triffitt plays on like a flash now. Kicks it up and over the centre of the ground. Up towards the half forward line with a big kick. Van der Feen the target. Down he goes. A ton of pressure out there. Scooped out by Mark Johnson. Roland Curley's got the run of the ball. He's lost it. It's over the line and out of bounds. Murray Studley, I'm sorry. He lost the run of the ball. They're over the line and out of bounds. And a throw in will take place. A capacity crowd here at North Hobart for the grand final. Giffard up and over the back. Goes for it a second time. Oh, well done there, Big Stuart Bennett. Caught, though. Gets the handball out. Picked up by Litton. He's getting a few kicks early. It's in the centre of the ground. Here's a clash coming up. Over the back goes Big Pilkington trying to punch the ball away. Down on hands and knees there. It's a Clarence player in Burns. Crowded play. A free kick. And it's going to go Clarence's way. And it's going to be uh, Mackay. Uh, Mackay will take the kick. No, it's back with Lamont. OK, Lamont now kicking it down towards centre-half forward. Looking for Hudson. Up he goes! And the champ is pulled out a screamer. Robert Norris is shaky, throwing his hands on the ground, saying it was my mark. But uh, I think Robin will have to agree with the umpire on that one. Although they both did have their hands on the ball initially. Here's Peter Hudson, 196 for the season. Requires four for the 200. On the half forward line. Nine and a half minutes into the first quarter. 
There's the kick. And the champ slips as he kicks that ball. It scored, but a point only. And that was quite a nasty ball. Well, yes, that's the atmosphere of grand finals, Bob. Not a very graceful kick by Peter Hudson. I'd say one of the least graceful that he's ever put in. But uh, he's all right. I think uh, Gnorky supporters, their heart was in their mouth for a little while. They're thinking that he may have been hurt. But he got up and looked ruefully at the ground and said, uh, I won't do that again. Must have been a slippery patch in this early rain. It's a kick out now from Chris Balding, and he finds Robin Norris. Quick handball over to Jeff Ball. That's good play by Clarence. They go up towards Van der Feen. And suddenly intercepts. Coming through hard for Gnorky. Tapping along in front and uh, is Chadwick, Tony Barwicks, and they're also trying to pick up inside the boundary line, but he can't do so. And uh, we're going to say a throw in on the half forward flank for Clarence. Here's the throw in now. Van der Feen going in after this one. Punched away by Curley. The free kick going the Magpies way. And Roland Curley will take it. Curley coming in towards the uh, centre of the ground. Looking for Robbie Dykes there. Up and over the back goes Leary. It's on the turf. Big Pilkington kicks it off the turf. Gets it out towards the half-forward line. No one at home there for them, though. Leading in the race for the ball is Trippett. Can't trap it. He's got it now. Handballs the ball backwards. Looking for a teammate there in Doyle, who backs him up pretty well. It's on the centre wing. Chadwick can't gain possession of it. Over the line and out of bounds in front of the right street stand. Clarence, one 2 eight. The Magpies, three behinds, three points. Bennett wins it. Litton will get the kick. Tries to burst his way through the pack. A high tackle, and he'll receive the free kick. Gary Litton bounces it once. Looking for somewhere to kick it to now. Left footing it up towards the half forward line. Hudson's got the run of the ball. Having a look over the shoulder, a left footer. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, wow. what a great goal by Peter Hudson. There was no pressure on him, but he was on his left foot and he banged it straight through the middle from a pretty acute angle. And that'll give uh, Peter Hudson a lot of confidence. Remember last year he kicked extremely badly, kicked seven or eight points. He allowed for the win magnificently there. The sign of a true champion using all his experience. And so Glenorchy's first on the board and the Magpies hit the lead by one point. One, three, nine, Glenorchy, Clarence, one, two, eight. You wouldn't see a better goal than that anywhere. No, well, he wasn't under pressure, but I tell you what, it was certainly hard to kick. There's the bounce in the centre of the ground now, Pilkington and Bennett. Pilkington gets the tap taken by Roland Curley, but he just can't handle that ball. He's bundled aside. Plenty of bodies being thrown around. The big kick struggled forward up Clarence's way, coming through Craig Martin. Hand pass over to Van der Feen. He's clear. Van der Feen goes goal a long one into the square. Freebold oh. pulled down a one-hander. Great mark by Chris Freebold. No play goes on and it's through for a goal. They get better. It's a goal anyway, but everybody stopped because they thought it was Chris Freebolt's mark. And coming in and slamming it through, it was a Clarence goal there. Everybody stopped. I think that is Mackay, isn't it, or Tyson? I don't think, yes, Michael Tyson it is. Took a while to pick him up, but while everybody stopped waiting for the umpire to blow the whistle, good play, Mike Tyson slammed it through. 2-2, Clarence, 1-3, Glenorchy as the Roos hit the front again. In goes Ling, met solidly by Burns, picked up by Mackay, gets a hand pass out there to French, down he goes, met by Lamont. Lamont puts it under the left foot, kicking it down towards the half-forward line, looking for Exel. He tries to trap the ball, he's still got it, he's got one or two to beat, swings around now, kicks it down deeper towards the goal square, towards Hudson, up he goes, he had it for a moment, he's still got it, back oh. over the shot. And he's popped it through. Oh, what a goal. Boy, oh boy. Mel Sutton, you're saying that last goal was a champion effort. What about that one? That was one of the best goals you could ever wish to see. Screwing it back over his shoulder. A magnificent effort. You would not wish to see better. Goal number 198 for the champion full forward. Two in the first quarter. He requires another two for the Magic 200. He's got radar on those goals. That boot, uh, the boot to the goal is radar, radar link there for sure because he didn't see any of those goals. Then just put it back over the shoulder and straight through the middle. Coming through now, Rod Curley, Noel Leary. Puts it up to centre half forward. Van der Feen and Johnston tapped away, but free kick Van der Feen. And if Andrew Van der Feen plays in front, he could get quite a few of those. Quickly on, looking for Garlic out wide. Punched away by no, it's marked by Garlic. McCann tried to punch away, but big David Garlick, uh, another very tall player for Clarence, and uh, McCann didn't have the height to be able to knock the ball away. So David Garlick, 30 metres out, 45 degree angle, has the chance to put Clarence back in front again as this game seesaws in the first quarter. Taking a lot of time, David Garlick, as well he should. Usually a good kick. 
The umpire's moving across a fair bit, and it's one behind. So, uh, uncharacteristically crooked there because he normally is very accurate and scores a level. Scores a level at the 14 minute mark of the first quarter of this great grand final. This crowd 20,000 plus enjoying every minute. Here's Steve McCann at full back for the Magpies. Which way will he go? Out past the main grandstand this time with a torpedo punt screwing off the side of the boot looking for Studley. Up he goes. Couldn't bring it down. Pilton has got a strong tackle on him. Play on says the umpire. Umpire Manson Pilkington using his strength, kicks it back towards the centre. Moles has got it, down he goes. It's pretty slippery out there at the moment. Caught by honestly uh, called by the umpire. The umpire is letting it go as Bennett bangs it back up towards the centre half forward line. And Van Der Feen. Andrew Van Der Feen. And he was in front once again. At centre half forward with a chance now directly in front. Contending with a slight breeze and the scores are dead level midway through the first term. Van der Feen. big kick, it'll make the square, flying high, it's down, it's a loose ball, Hughes is there, could force it through for a point or it could be out of bounds, it is out of bounds and the throw in will take place right alongside the point post with the ruse in attack, a loose ball, kicked out of the pack, down towards the centre wing, society side of the ground, Clarence players everywhere, Mackay with a hand pass to Gifford under a lot of pressure. Gifford gets it away. Out towards Lamont. He's under pressure as well. In goes Litton. French is there too. Down goes Litton. Curley coming into assist. They're playing for the free kick at the moment. The umpire's not giving any, but now the free kick is there. And Greg Trench, the brilliant Bruce Sederman, will take the kick. He puts in a short one looking for Hughes. Almost mucked it up. He runs on quickly with a right footer up towards the edge of the square. A mark. Van der Feen. Oh, what a game he's playing so far. He's in front of the pack every time when he's going for those marks, and when you're six foot three and you're there, well, you find it pretty hard to miss when you've got his ability. And there's the change being made, I think. Robbie Dyke's coming up, and I think he'll take up the position now on Van Der Feen. He kicks for goal. It may have swung away at the last moment. No! no just straight dead. It wasn't goal. much in that. But uh, Andrew Van Der Feen clapping his hands there, and you can see uh, the big Clarence crowd cheering away Andrew Van Der Feen a great start probably not a good move to have Robbie Dykes at uh, centre half forward and Mark Johnson on Van Der Feen well a move has been made now to Robbie Dykes as Clarence go one goal up Robbie Dykes on Andrew Van Der Feen and uh, remember in the second semi-final Van Der Feen had the better of Dykes but I've got a lot of respect respects for Robbie Dykes' ability so let's see if he can nullify the Roo champ there's the bounce in the centre now Pilkington taps it down well to Miles but he's caught Comes to Linton, dies on the ball. Linton's up again, playing well in the centre. Gary Linton caught. Free kick against him or a bounce? A Umpire bounce. Clement says, I'll have a bounce. A good decision. Up it goes again. Pilkington and uh, the height of Bennett. Good tap by Pilkington. No, it wasn't because it goes straight to French. French is up again to Garlic. A good mark by Craig Martin in the fence for the Magpies. And that was a strong mark by the little back pocket. Taking his time now, going uh, to the Ride Street wing. Looking for Roland Curley. Bumpy Triffitt. Comes down now, coming through Tony Barwick, the dasher. Onto the left foot, up toward Hudson and Norris. A one-out duel here, Hudson all the way. You can see it coming when the ball is 30 metres away from him. Used judgment, used his uh, body to perfection, nudged out Robin Norris and took the mark with the greatest of ease in the finish. Made a hard mark, look easy. This could be 199, Bob. Peter Hudson, two goals so far in this quarter. Coming in for uh, probably the easiest one he's had. But can he get it? 20 metres out, the Gonorki champion fires away, the goal umpire says one point. So after two almost miraculous goals by Hudson in the early part of the game, he gets a relatively easy one from a set shot and he can't put it through. 2-4 now Gonorki, trailing uh, Clarence, 3-3, 21, but all the makings of a great game of football. We're waiting for the ball to come back from the crowd. We might see a few souvenirs today with this... Big crowd here, be pretty hard to chase the ball up. Chris Balding, the fullback, indicating that he wants something to kick out. He's getting a bit of sick of uh, standing there, and eventually a new ball has come over to umpire Gary Clements. Tosses it to Les Manson, and uh, with all the action out there in the centre, this is a bit of a hold-up. That's one of the first mistakes they've made all day. And it goes, I thought over, they... goes over the boundary line again from Jeff Doyle, so we'll have to retrieve it once more. I thought they would have had the uh, the spare ball at the goal squares, but it anyway... It would have been a very good idea, Mel. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Back now to uh, Spalding. He'll put the game underway once more with a big kick, holding up in the breeze, out towards the half-back flank. A big punch there by Pilkington. Crowded play. A chance now for the Ruse, and it's booted up towards the centre wing on the right street side of the ground. Studley and Walker. Croft going there for the ball, rebounding off the
their bodies over the line and out of bounds another throw in 16 plays 21 the lead with Clarence but the Magpies are kicking with a breeze at the moment down goes Exel appealing for the free kick goes in after it again and handballs it away to Curley Curley taps it on here's Leary coming through it rebounds off him using his strength Litton slams it in towards full oh. forward and Hudson again has taken the mark on the chest what a great game Gary Linton is playing out of the uh, center too Mal he's got tons of kicks in this quarter as we wait for Hudson he's bending down booing up his boot and uh, another pretty easy shot for Peter Hudson only about 15 meters out 45 degree angle this time he'll have probably have the breeze a little bit more behind him 20 minutes into the first quarter Hudson's already kicked two just listen to that crowd as he takes the kick it's there yes, it's there just but it's there and she's third so Peter Hudson in his farewell game in Tasmania moves on to 199 for the season and he's had the best of his jewels down there so far in the first quarter some of the other good hockey forwards have been uh, certainly missing since the first bounce mm -hmm. and good job that he's been up there for them well, Peter Hudson looks very relaxed out there and uh, he's pointing to the crowd or something as the umpire's going up they're going up to get the other football which they need they're having a lot of troubles keeping footballs on the ground at the moment but the crowd a lot of the crowd have come to see Peter Hudson do well and he's certainly not letting them down three goals in the first quarter uh, you couldn't wish for more and in his, in his farewell game the champ is really turning it on 33 years of age and he's moving like a man of 21 at the moment we're back in the center now Chris Revolt in the ruck for Clarence as Pilkington who's just rucking all day gets a big thump down the center half forward they can take advantage of that Tim Wardham comes in he's swamped by Clarence players Leary a hand pass to Revolt who tapped on towards French Pilkington running everywhere goes to Barwick Barwick coming out of the center drives Glenorchy forward where's Hudson this time there's nobody home except Chris Spalding over to Greg Thurgood Thurgood puts a quick one back in the direction of Woodham Leary uh, chasing the ball and goes over the boundary line near the scoreboard with Glenorchy one point in front but kicking with the advantage of this breeze although it is fluctuating a fair bit Bennett and Thurgood there Thurgood falling into the back of Bennett and Big Stewart may get the free kick the bearded beanpole with the ball in the back pocket Stuart Bennett slams it up towards the centre wing on the right street side of the ground. Up goes Big Pilkington, didn't bring it down. Taken there by Barwick. Slam back in towards the full forward position. <laughs> Hudson is there. In goes Lamont. Handballs it out to Exel. And Exel has put it through. No. Oh. Oh. Well, he misses from point blank range. A oh, golden so opportunity missed there. So that was finals nerves. Missed that one for him. He was just too anxious. But it, it was great play there, Mel, by young Scott Lamont. A brilliant handball to Axel, but unfortunately he let him down badly. That was a golden opportunity missed by Glenorchy. You don't get them much easier than that. Let's check the scoreboard. Glenorchy, 3-5-23. Clarence, 3-3-21. Two points the difference. And again, we've got this hold up. Another ball being thrown back to umpire Manson here in front of our commentary position. For goodness sake, leave a couple down there. That's what they've got to do. At this rate, they'll run out of them. Maybe there's a bloke on the domain selling autographed uh, copies of footballs kicked by Peter Hudson in his farewell game. <laughs> well, that's going to the moment. We'll have a 45-minute first quarter, too. We'll be finishing in the dark. Here's the kickoff, anyway, by Sporting. A big kick, beautiful kick. High out towards the half-back flank. Flying high was Rewalt. Couldn't bring it down. Rod Hughes, his kick is smothered by Thurgood. And again, it's over the line and out of bounds. Well, look at that crowd. I've never seen that uh, particular section of the North Hobart ground packed to capacity. A little kiosk over there. Here's the throw in, Bobchick. Here it comes down there towards uh, Danny Ling. He can't handle it. Picked up by Thurgood. He's down. Players are falling over. Eventually, Tony Triffitt struggles to kick in. Turley punches forward for Gnorki. Over towards Timmy Woodham, trying oh. desperately to pick up. Eventually gets onto the left foot, slams in towards goal. Hudson done the knee of the game, but it's going to beat him through for one behind. So the Pies having all the opportunities at the moment with the ball down there, but they just can't find the uh, big opening, and uh, it takes Lenorki now into 3-6. Clarence 3-3, three, three, three points up as Chris Balding kicks out. Dropping a little bit short underneath it, Curley, and at last he pulls down and Mark. He's had his hands on a lot in the first quarter, Roland Curley, but uh, that one he's swallowed on his chest, wrapped his arms around it. Pilkington standing there beside him and Tony Barwick telling him what to do. I think they're probably saying, have a shot, Roland, because he's not a bad kick when he gets onto them. There's his long spiral punt kick going to land right in the square too. Six uh, Clarence players, one uh, Glenorchy, that was Hudson, punched away from him. Comes down, T uh, Timmy Woodham heavily fell there. Rod Hughes trying to pick up the ball, but it's over the boundary line for another throw in. 
a typical TFL grand final, packed full of pressure as we see the throw in in front of the main grandstand, working his way to the front as Rewalt, doing fairly well to Rewalt. Gets it down there towards Hughes. Hughes has got it now under the left foot, kicking it up towards the right street side of the ground, but Moles and some of the Glenorchy players are now starting to come into the game. John Moles about to take the uh, kick. Crowded play on the forward line for the Magpies. Hardly any of them in defence at the moment. Pack of players there. Long hand pass out. Pilkington with the chance. Oh, Marge has squeezed way through there. Left foots it in towards the goal square. Hudson had a chance there for a moment. Down towards Doyle. Doyle goes for a long hand pass out towards Triffitt. Down goes Triffitt. Going in as Woodham there. Into his sister's Leary. A free kick free, coming up. Free kick, Timmy Woodham. And Timmy Woodham, the fireman, has got the free kick. Desperately wanting to play on his first premiership side after uh, being in three losing ones, and he's doing pretty well. But John Pilkin, the, su the surprise, I've never seen a big man move so quickly as he has in this four first quarter. He's running the uh, 10 yards in about half a second, I'd say. He's really moving well. Not marking, but once the ball hits the ground, he's like lightning. Timmy Woodham in the forward pocket. Shot for goal. Acute angle. Goal umpire right underneath it. A point only. So, Glenorchy now, three goals, seven, 25, Clarence, 3-3, three, three, 21. A difference of only four points, about 25 minutes into the first quarter. But that breeze has been assisting the uh, Glenorchy side, kicking towards the domain end. Though it is fluctuating a fair bit, it's going across and round, and we saw actually a lot of goals scored down that end in the reserves game. It's punched away by Pilkington. There's a chance for Greg French. He gets it back in the centre where Linton's waiting, but in front, a good mark to Neil Moorcroft of Clarence. Neil Moorcroft, a good player in the final series, breaks away quickly, kicks out wide. Underneath it, uh, Tyson, he drops the mark over Garlic, it is. He recovers well on the left foot. He's running the wrong way, though. Still got it, grabbed, dumped by Donny Holland. Holding the ball is the decision. A good one, too, I think. He had the chance to do something with it, and Donny Holland, Benorki's little rover, will take the resulting free kick. Don Holland. Long one. Underneath it, Woodham takes the mark well. Bounce defenders caught napping a little bit. So Timmy Woodham in everything at the moment down there. And let's see if he can break the drought for Glenorchy at the moment by putting a goal on the board. There's the kick. It's swaying about in the breeze. Right on the goal line in front. Hudson punched away from him. There's taken by Exel. Fires a goal. I think it's a point again. No, it's there. Well, Kim Exel missed a setter. But that was not an easy goal. And that should give uh, the youngster plenty of heart. Uh, after that miss. So, Glenorchy now getting away from Clarence a little bit. 4 7 31. The Roos 3 3 21. And there you see Kim Exel on your screen. Missed a sitter of a goal from a few metres out when he was by himself. But that one, he recovered well, slammed it over his shoulder, and put it straight through the middle. 27 minutes into the first term. 10 points the difference. The Magpies in front. The Roos need a goal before the, uh, the siren to end the first quarter. Here's umpire Clements. The umpire's doing a tremendous job too. Pilkington wins it easy out of the centre. Thurgood had the run of the ball. Chadwick with a kick towards the centre. In goes Pilkington again. Handballs not taken by Linton. Backing him up is Mark Johnson. They're down in the uh, dust bowl there at the moment. Umpire Manson right over the top of the players. And a bounce will take place. Dying moments of the uh, first quarter TFL Grand Final. Pilkington again, does it nicely. Taken by Vanderfeen, dummies a hand pass, he's trapped. Out towards Hughes, good play Hughes, grabbed by the leg, must get the free kick. Rod Hughes. On the edge of the square, with a big one, up towards the uh, full forward position, looking for Garlic, playing from behind. Franks is there, picked up by Dykes, but he's kicked it straight out to where Mackay has taken the mark on the chest. Mackay puts in a short one into the forward pocket, and the mark has been taken there for the Clarence side by Kelly. Rod Kelly. Well, can the Roos score a goal before the siren for the first quarter? Pretty good kick, hits oh, the nice. boat. That breeze started to bring the ball in at the last moment, but not enough, and it struck the post at a point results. Good start by Rod Kelly, though, because he's been down the two finals games, and uh, he's been playing well so far today. As McCann kicks off, dropping short onto the chest of Rod Hughes. He's pretty prominent also early in this game. Rod Hughes now going for a long one into the square. Punched away, coming down there, the chance for Kelly now as he turns. Always heavily met by Moles. Coming through Neil Moorcroft, he's grabbed. Comes to Tyson, Tyson on the left foot. Scrambles it forward. Robbie Dykes will boot the Magpies out of trouble. Underneath it, Greg French and also Holland. Greg French, great mark by the centreman. Got up well from behind and pulled down a very strong mark. 
Greg Pranks is going to go long with a drop punt kick, which is going to land pretty well in the square. A lot of interference to Van Der Feen. Comes over the back. Coming through strongly, McCann. Got it in front of him. Did he get one in the back? Oh, oh it's on just in front of the goal square there, too, as Robbie Dykes is down. The umpire's coming in to separate things. And we're going to see as Robbie Dykes gets up off the ground. Trainer dusting him down, wiping his head, and we're going to see a boundary throw in. Back to the play. Here's the throw in now. Thumped out of the air there by Franks. Down towards the half back line. Litton is there. Umpire blows the whistle. A free kick, and it'll go to the Magpies uh, wingman in Barwick. Hoots of the crowd there at the moment. Here's the kick now by Barwick. Back up towards the right street side of the ground. Over the back. Thurgood has pulled down a screamer. Plays on like a flash. Left putting it up towards centre half forward. The kick is a poor one. Misdirected. And Sporting has marked it on the chest. 31 plays 22. The advantage with the Magpies. Here's Sporting at centre half back. Torpedo punt. Up and over the uh, centre of the ground. But again, here's the mark. And uh, not too much in that, I don't no, think. No, a lot of acting, though. But I don't think he's hurt very much. Murray Studley takes the mark and the kick now. Back over the centre. Curley trying to force his way to the front. But Leary, strong in defence. Strong pair of hands has pulled it down. Noel Leary now into the centre of the ground. Interference between Dykes and Van Der Feen, and Dykes has pulled down a ripper. Andrew Van Der Feen thought he might have got a free kick for interference there, but Robbie Dykes, a lot of pressure on the uh, Magpie skipper at the moment to nullify Van Der Feen, he did it well that time. His kick now looking for Curley again, he's outnumbered. Norris stumps the ball away, but uh, coming through now, Danny Ling trying to pick up, runs into a wall of Clarence players, and umpire Gary Clements is coming in to have a bounce with Lenorki in attack on their half forward line. There's the bounce. Donny Holland's going after the tap. He gets it too from the back. Picked up for, by Ross Burns for Clarence and onto the wing. Punched away there and Robbie Dykes coming in. Hard to get the ball. The whistle blows. And umpire Les Manson comes in to separate another ball as Timbers are fraying. Speaking to Robbie Dykes. Robbie oh. Dykes, uh, as you saw, grabbing hold of the Guernsey of Michael Tyson. And he's got the ball under his arm and will get the free kick. Rubbing his face. An experienced finals an experience, footballer. An experienced campaigner, Robbie Dykes. He knows all about the game when the pressure is really on. There's his kick now. Big pack up, comes down to Jeff Doyle, gets it over to Leary towards Rod Hughes. Hughes grabbed, but the Roos get out of trouble well to Greg French. Struggles it into the centre where Studley takes it. He can't take it. Was touched anyway. Coming through Neil Moorcroft. Good hand pass to Van Der Feen. Van Der Feen up towards Garlic. Got the chance, but coming through McCann in to help him. Rod Franks fighting for the ball, taps it on well. Neil Warcroft the chance if he can pick up. He can't handle it. Over the boundary line as Warcroft dives after it. And we're going to see a throw in in the forward pocket. I tell you what, Bob, the Magpie machine's putting a lot more pressure on the Roos this week than we saw from the Bay last week. They certainly are. Well, they're a lot better side and they're showing it out there today. There's the side for the end of the first quarter. 32 minutes of play we had. And we see Glenorchy 4 7 31, Clarence 3 4 22, with the advantage probably of a slight breeze. There's not much in it. Have a break, fellas. <laughs> of the Winfield TFL Grand Final, the Magpies are in front by nine points. Still anyone's match. There's the bounce. Pilkington has done so well. Wins it again out of the centre down towards Thurgood. Thurgood is trapped by two uh, Clarence players there. Miles, too. Trying to get rid of it, but the free kick goes to Rod Hughes. Hughes with his left footer high up towards the half-forward line, looking for Van Der Feen. Front position now taken by Martin. Martin strong in defence for the Magpies, up and over the centre of the ground, looking for Curley, but Leary. Noel Leary, the Rue a skipper and coach, is marked. Midway between the centre and the centre-half back position. Electing now, oh, the kick is smothered. Goes back and after it. Good play, Leary. Well done. Boots it back down towards the half-forward line. A big punch out of the air there by Robbie Dykes. A loose ball. Stewie Bennett tries to sock it off the turf. So too does Ling. Out towards uh, Holland. Holland with a hand pass to Curley. The Magpies are away. Litton bangs it in towards the full-forward position. Hudson and Norris. Up and over the back goes Doyle. Norris has got it. Well done by uh, Robin Norris with a high left footer up towards the edge of the square. Tapped on there by Leary. Down he goes. Here's Barwick now coming out of the pack, swinging around and left footing it in towards the forward position again. Hudson playing from behind. Had grab. He's oh, got it again. It. No, I don't think the yes, umpire has awarded it. Uh, he's going to bounce it, I think. He's come in and blown the whistle. I think it was a pretty fair decision. I thought the uh, Clarence defender might have had the first grab at the ball, but here it is, the bounce. I think you're right, Mel. There's the bounce. Loose ball. Burns is there. Picked up now by Spaulding. He relieves the pressure with a big one back towards the centre wing on the right street side of the ground. 
Van der Feen from behind, uses his strength, comes through the handball. Oh, a big punch. And the ball is down towards the half-forward line. Studley is there, picked up now by Moorcroft. Good hand pass. Here goes Mackay. Mackay goes for another hand pass to Kelly. Kelly goes for a hand pass. Oh, Two. puts Garlic under tremendous pressure. They probably overdid it. Someone should have had a shot towards goal. And meanwhile, the ball is back on the society wing. There's Chadwick swinging the ball over now towards Moorcroft at centre half forward. Neil Moorcroft goes for a hand pass, grab from behind to Tyson. He's caught, but he gets his kick in. Studley underneath it. But Mackay up the high flyer. Warren Mackay. A great mark. And uh, he probably should have had a shot a few seconds earlier instead of going for the handball. Uh, now he can make up for it. He's certainly got the opportunity anyway. He's only 25 metres out directly in front. And the Clarence Wingman, who played a great game last week but was carried off on a stretcher in the uh, third quarter, I think it was, with a back injury, now has the chance to put the fourth goal on the board for the Roos. Slips a bit as he kicks, but it looks pretty straight. Yes, it's there. And so... That's the one Clarence needed to bring them back into this game. Not that they were out of it, but they're now only three points behind uh, Glenorchy. 4-4, Clarence 28, Glenorchy 4-7-31. And we see Ross Burns going up to congratulate Warren McKay on that goal and on his play. And it's uh, certainly anybody's game. Anybody's have made uh, an interchange, Bob. We see that Cashin is now on the ground. There'll be plenty of that, I uh, think, before the day's out. And it's... Uh, we're going to see a fascinating battle here. We have so far, especially I think between Andrew Van Der Feen and Robbie Dykes. Van Der Feen at centre half forward and Dykes. That's a really great clash. Put the ball back in the centre once more. Up goes Bennett. Wins it that time, but it goes straight to his opponent there in Pilkington. He's caught, held onto it too long. Definite free kick. And the bean pole will drive the ruse back into attack with a high one down towards the half forward line. Over the back goes Martin, appealing for the mark, but no. Hughes is there. More crop. Gets a short one in. It's being worked in towards the forward pocket. Garlic leads in the race for the ball. Can he trap it? He's still got it in front of him. Swings around, handballs it back towards a teammate. It's misdirected and picked up by Mark Johnson. Puts a short one out towards the half-back flank. Looking for Holland. He went up, couldn't bring it down. Moorcroft's got it again, but a strong tackle. Yeah. Dropping the ball and the free kick will be taken by uh, Studley. I think it is out there on the half-back flank. Here he is to take the kick. Up towards the centre wing, right street side of the ground, Pilkington is the target. Bennett had it, runs into a barrage of players there. Worked out of the pack by Linton. Tons of pressure out there. Eventually it's picked up by Lamont. Dummies a hand pass, decides now to kick the ball. Up towards the half forward line and Timmy Woodham has dropped down from the forward line to take the mark on the chest. Short one and Curley, unopposed there, has taken the mark short of the centre half forward position. And Stuart Bennett dropping back on Hudson as the Clarence players form around him. He's going to drop short. Hudson, now oh, he's got it. Well, three or four players around him, and Stuart Bennett was dropping back on him, the Ruckman, and Peter Hudson still got the ball. How did he do it? Bob Cheek, he's already kicked three. He's on 199. This could be Peter Hudson's 200th goal in his farewell season. Well, I don't think it's ever been done before, or if it has, uh, we don't know about it. And... Certainly, I hope the crowd realises this is his 200th goal. I think most of them do, and you'll hear the applause, no doubt, if he can kick it. His wife and family will get a perfect shot of it because they're in that grandstand. There's there the it kick. is. 200 goals for Peter Hudson, and what a fantastic effort. You see Timmy Woodham shaking him by the hand. Peter Hudson waves to the stand to his wife, I'm sure, up there, and Peter Crimmins' his wife, his friend's wife also, waving to the crowd. What a fantastic effort. And, and they're they coming to the ground. Effort. Yeah, well, so they should. It will probably never be equaled again. It will never be seen again. But Peter Hudson, there's not much more you can say about him except the true champion. And we can see his wife up there in the stand, I think, or the cameras are trying to find her. Peter Hudson, I congratulate you. I congratulate you. Everybody here congratulates you. And uh, what a fantastic effort in his last game. 200 goals. And he's got four out of Glenorchy's five. And Glenorchy are now nine points clear. There's the bounce. The Magpies starting to work their way really towards the ascendancy in the game. Picked up now by Linton with a left foot up towards the half-forward line. Clever mark, Ross Burns. Magnificent mark, that one, Ross Burns, on the half-back line for the Ruse. He plays on quickly with a drop putt out towards the uh, centre wing. Flying high, no one can bring it down. Free kick coming out of it, and it's going Clarence's way, and it'll be Giffard, the player, to take it. Here's Shane Giffard. Here's his kick, up towards the half-forward flank, dropping short. Hughes tried to work his way towards the front of the pack, couldn't do so. 
coming through strongly there was Mackay. It's back towards the centre. Picked up by French. Slams it down towards the full forward position looking for Garlic. Oh. Strong mark. Craig Martin, the Magpie back pocket player. Very cool in a crisis. Marking on the chest and slips it up towards the centre wing on the society side of the ground. Comes Barwick. He's met solidly by French and down he goes. He's up quickly though. Umpire Manson blows the whistle and we'll see a bounce on the centre wing. Bounce on the centre wing. Ruckman waiting to go in there. Pilkington still on the ball and still doing well against Bennett. He taps it down this time to Exel. Exel can't get rid of it. He's grabbed. Play goes on. Oh, he's, no, he threw it out in front of him, but he wasn't grabbed. It would have been a free kick against him. Eventually it is, and the free kick is oh. gone. Oh, Shane Giffard using his feet a bit there, and tempers become frayed once more. As you can see, the umpire, great shot there from trying to separate Tony Barwick and Bumpy Triffitt. Down on his knees, in fact, the boundary umpire, and runners and everybody out there to restore order. And David Cashin of Clarence, after all that, will take the kick. Into the man on the mark. Comes down to French. Hand pass back to Cashin. Cashin gets it forward. Dykes and Van Der Feen over the back. Loose ball for anybody that can get it in front. McCann diving on it. A lot of pressure being applied. I'll have to have a bounce, I think. Robbie Dykes has the ball. He won't let go of it in a hurry. Umpire Les Manson speaking to him as he bends down. Bit of a smile on his face, too. And uh, a little bit of a little relaxed moment there to try and get the player's mind perhaps off uh, any more fights. There's the, uh, the punch and it's going to go over the boundary line in the forward pocket. The Norky leading by nine points, still anybody's match. And we see the boundary throwing with Clarence right in attack. Here's the throw in. Van der Feen and Franks down to Rewalt. Still got it, Rewalt. Tries to kick it, he's still got it. Strength. Loose ball, could be a free kick there, you know, to Noel Moorcroft or Neil Moorcroft. I think he's going to get it. And Moorcroft on the half-forward line, or his forward of that really, almost midway between the full forward line and the half-forward line, with a chance to bring up a major score for the Roos. Lenorki 5-7-37, lead the Roos 4-4-28. Moorcroft, good kick. It's a goal. And now we've really got a game on our hands. This fellow's played his heart out for the Roos from the very first bounce. And we see Glenorchy 5-7-37. It's back to three points the difference. Clarence 5-4-34. And what a game we're seeing, Bob. We certainly are, Mal. Three points the difference. Glenorchy get away by uh, about nine or ten points, but then Clarence keep fighting back, as the Roos have shown all this season. They will never give in. It's their great fighting spirit that's got them this far, and uh, they're not going to give the game away easily now. But I also uh, take my hat off to Neil Moorcroft for the games he has played in this final series, and he's playing well again today. A great little fighter who never gives up. Pilkington wins the tap. He's won them all so far, but Clarence are doing all right around the packs. Comes to Moles now. Can't pick up. Cancel Moorcroft again. He's heavily tackled. The free kick is going to go. I think it's going to be a bounce. Umpire Clements bouncing the ball. Comes towards Tyson. He thumps it away into the centre. Coming through now is uh, Studley. He's going to go for a bounce. Studley goes up the centre half forward, Norris under the ball, and Leary also. They spoil each other, gives a chance for Hudson again. Runs past two opponents, turns around the right foot, dodges, weaves. Still got it. Under the left foot, he had it for about half a minute. Up the full forward line, a good mark in defence by Chris Spalding. Well, Peter Hudson. And it's on over there between Peter Hudson and there's a chain get barred. And it's not very often you see Peter Hudson involved in a fight like that, and it's really on. Well, Temper's becoming frayed. Peter Hudson, you can see he's uh, telling everybody what he thinks about it, and it takes a fair bit to ruffle the champ. He wasn't too happy, you can tell by the expression on his face. No, I think he copped a fair bit of punishment there at one stage, and he obviously didn't like it. No, he did Thought not. Thought the umpire should have done a little bit more about it, perhaps. Well, he wipes the brown, goes back to the business end of the game. There he is, a perfect shot of him on your screen, and I think we'll see plenty of action from here on in. Now what's going on? We're going to see Chris Balding take his kick after that brilliant mark in defence when Peter Hudson got the ball down to him. And so we're back to how it was about uh, 60 seconds ago as Chris Balding kicks the ruse out of trouble. There's the big kick. They fly high. Litton's got it now. Goes for a run. Left puts it high out towards the half-forward flank looking for Lamont. He's underneath it. Had it for a moment. He's lost it. Holland is there. So too is Mackay. He's a speedster. It's been forced towards the line. No, it's still in play. Down on hands and knees is Lamont. Forced out there by Mackay. Good play by Mackay. He gets it out there to a teammate in French. 
handballed on Hughes, boots it down towards the half forward line. There's a ton of fight left in the Rouge yet. Don't worry about Out that. Out of bounds on the full. Out of bounds on the full. Three points the difference, always midway through the second term. And it'll be Robbie Dykes, the uh, magpie skipper, who'll take the kick. And we can see now that Noel Leary has lined up at uh, fullback on uh, Peter Hudson. Back to the play, Robbie Dykes. Here's the kick, up towards the centre wing. Moles the target, up over the back, punched away, a loose ball. The Rouge should gain possession of it here. Through the legs there of a teammate. Goes in after it again, he's met with a brick wall. Down he goes, the umpire's letting it go. He gets in quickly then to make sure there's no fighting on the ground at the last minute. I think they're umpiring pretty well. At least they're letting the game flow, although we are seeing a few punch-ups. Pilking and tap again. He's dominating the ruck up towards Hudson and Leary. Hudson in front, very nearly took the mark, and it's going to be played. And by gee, the parent supporters don't like that. And Peter Hudson, uh, well, he only just held along a 15-metre penalty, and Clarence are throwing the game away if they're going to do something stupid like that. They're letting the crowd get them in a little bit there. Peter Hudson didn't really hold the mark. Now, touch and go, one that could have gone either way, but he was paid it. The ball was tossed back wide to him, 15 metre penalty. And Peter Hudson misses very, very few kicks from 20 metres out almost directly in front. And listen to that Clarence crowd boo as the champ runs in the kick. I won't be able to talk over it. He's missed it. Well, well, well. He doesn't miss many of those, but that one he did. He couldn't really say that the crowd put him off because he said he uh, would be used to a reception like that from opposing fans. But Peter Hudson, anyway, missed the centre. And the drama continues here at North Hobart. Trippett at fullback, puts it onto the boot and then goes for a run. Puts it out towards the half-back line looking for Norris. Picked up there by Mackay. His kick is high down towards the half-forward line. Who will go lead in the race for the ball? It's Van Der Feen and Dykes. It's still in play. Over goes Dykes. Over the line and out of bounds. And another throw in. That's four points the difference. About 17 minutes into an action-packed second quarter here at North Hobart. Here's the throw in. Rewald and Pilkington. Pilkington wins it easily. Down towards Exel. Couldn't come away at it. Picked up there by Mark Johnson. Hurries it up towards the centre wing. Shepherd it out, Thurgood. And as a result of that, Stuart Bennett has taken the mark on the chest. Here's Bennett's kick. It's falling short. Front position to Casham. Couldn't take the mark. Here's Linton. He's had a great first half. He's bounced it twice. Shorts it up towards Lamont on the half-forward line. And Lamont has taken the mark. The Magpies in attack and Hudson screaming for the ball at full forward. He says, move it up there quickly, please. Two against one. Punched away. A chance now for Spalding. Carries it over the line. It's out of bounds. About 20 metres around from the Magpie point post at the Argyle Street end of the ground with the Magpies in front by four points. The throw in, Bobchick. The throw in, uh, calling over Roland Curley gives a chance now for Clarence to drive out of trouble through Spalding into the centre. Over the head of Dykes and Van Der Feen. pursuing the ball. Heavily tackled by Studley. Play goes on. Could have been a free kick there. Walk off. Nearly grabbed around the neck too. Umpire's letting everything go as French comes in. Onto the right foot. Kicking out wide towards Kelly. Coming to meet the ball. Here's McCann. He's grabbed. Play goes on. And it's really good grand final football. And the umpires are not spoiling it by pulling out free kicks. Although there might have been a couple there that could have been paid. I reckon Van making, Feen was unlucky. Making, making for a good spectacle just the same, though, whichever way you look at it. There's the ball kick from Kim Axel up to the wing. Scott Lamont playing well. Runs into trouble there, though. Comes down to Roland Curley. Curley turns onto the right foot. Hudson Leary. Leary. Could have been his paid. Fair enough. If he paid that one to Peter Hudson, he must be consistent. Oh. Gary Clements having a talk to Peter Hudson. And uh, Rue supporters love every minute of that. There's Leary's kick, centre wing, society side of the ground. Passion on the ground as an interchange player. Marks plays on quickly. Good play. Gives it to French. French down towards Garlic. Garlic has got it. Should be awarded the mark. Must be. Would have almost been a free kick anyway. And Garlic, who's at centre half forward, usually a fairly good kick of the ball. Accuracy sometime not the best. But if they wanted a goal, this is the one they really need. David Garlic. Well, I think David Garlic's a good kick for goal. We see umpire Manson uh, running down there now and getting some boys that have come over the fence, getting them off the ground, which is fair enough too because they could easily get hurt. But David Garlic, I think, is an accurate kick, but he's let me down a few times. Let's see what he can do this time, Mel Sutton. Here he is, David Garlic. Very important kick. Four points the difference. Huge crowd here for the grand final. The kick by Garlic, a left footer. 
It'll drop short. Flying high there was Franks. Didn't bring it down. It's been forced through for a point. So it's a score, but a minor one only. And Glenorchy, 5-8-38. They're three points in front of Clarence. 5-5-35. Five, five, Almost 19 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Here's McCann. And there's a section of that crowd that I was telling you about. Pleasing for the TFL, no doubt. Here's the kick off by McCann. Out towards Pilkington. He goes the punch. Gets it down there towards Studley. Or Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson it is. Up towards the half forward line. Over the back. Doyle. Should have stayed down. Picked up by Ling. Beautiful pass towards Hudson. Punched away by Leary. They're having a great battle. Yeah, Lil, Mole Leary's doing a good job. I think he's put his reputation on the line by going down there on Peter Hudson. So I suppose Clarence thinks if they can stop Hudson, well, they've got a premiership in their grasp of what better man to do it than their captain coach. The punch down there coming to Noel Leary. Noel Leary drives up to the up to the centre line. Moles and Pilkington spoil each other. Linton struggles at forward. Triffitt coming out, takes the mark on the chest. Dependable defender now. Bumpy Triffitt, he's gone from uh, an occasional player to a very, very consistent defender. There's his kick, looking for Van Der and Dykes. Van Der nearly over the back, comes to Moorcroft. Moorcroft up towards Garlic, and he's marked again, David Garlic. And the Roos are starting to look good in the latter part of the second quarter. David Garlic has the chance to atone for his, well, you couldn't call it a miss, really. He was a long, long way out from goal. But now he's well within scoring distance, only about... 25, 30 metres, 45 degree angle, and a goal will put Clarence in front. There it is, right through the middle. And Clarence hit the lead for the first time since the early part of this, early part of the first quarter. And the Clarence fans go mad. See Andrew Van Der Feen and David Garlic on the screen. I think it's David Garlic's first goal for the match. And Clarence move on to 6-5, Glenorchy 5-8. Interesting to note, Bob, that six Clarence players have kicked goals. That's a, that's a sign of an even team, and it's the way it should be, really. Glenorchy, of course, are relying so much on Peter Hudson, while every Clarence forward is able to contribute, and that's a real team effort. And it's an even team that Clarence has been through the year and has got them where they are at the moment. The Roos are back in front by three points. Out of the centre, they're trying to work it back into attack again. Goes through uh, Barwick there. He's lost it. Out towards uh, Tyson. Still got the ball in front of him. He's lost it. Down he goes. A scramble of players out there. Umpire Clements on the scene quickly. Another bounce. We've played about 21 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Perfect conditions for football. The breeze is freshen. Rewalt won it there, but it was smothered by Pilkington. Here's Studley with it. A left footer out towards the centre wing, but the mark will be taken out there for the ruse by Tyson. Michael Tyson, centre wing, right street side. In towards the half forward line. Van Der Feen slips at a vital moment. They all misjudge it. It rebounds. A chance now for French in a ton of trouble. He's lost it. Dykes has got it. Goes for a hand pass. Down he goes. Taken by Barwick. Barwick up towards Hudson on the half forward line. Hudson had it for a moment. Leary, strong in defence, but Hudson still got the ball. On the boundary line, kicks it in towards goal. It struck the point post. Out on the pull, of course, having hit the point post. Noel Leary getting support from Robin Norris, and he's doing a good job on Peter Hudson at the moment, but can he keep it up? Spalding, torpedo putt. Down towards Rewalt. Front position, strong mark by the youngster. Chris Rewalt. Up and over the uh, centre of the ground, out towards Van Der Feen, falling short, but he does it well. Snaps it out of the air, left puts it down towards Garlic. He should mark. Oh, no. In his efforts to try and keep that ball in play, probably slackened on the speed somewhat, off the side of the hand and over the line and out of bounds. Here's the throw in with Clarence in attack once more, and another goal would put the ruse well clear. Danny Link coming in hard for the ball. Neil Moorcroft, he's grabbed, he can't get clear. Thurgood has the chance to come out. And Greg Thurgood does it well as he drives into the centre. Not a good kick. Coming through, good mark, bumpy trip. Oh, gee, he's playing well too again. Tony Triffitt. Looking for a lead further afield. Goes for a short one. That's good play over to Greg French. Breaks the pattern of play up while Glenorchy were expecting a long kick. French now into the pocket. Could be a free kick there against Glenorchy. Knocked over was uh, Michael Tyson, is it? No, it's, yes, it is Michael Tyson. And he was uh, knocked over when the ball was... Nowhere near him, really, and he's going to take the kick that will put Clarence, if he gets it, nine points clear, and that's a handy lead approaching the 25-minute mark of the second quarter. 
Michael Tyson taking a lot of time. Been a prominent player today so far. A vital kick. Mark Johnston on the mark. There it is. Looks a bit of cross goal. It is. And through for one behind. The Clarence now four points in front. What a game. Crowd are enthralled by it. And certainly the commentators are because it's a great game of football. 6-6 six, six, Clarence. 5-8 Glenorchy. McCann with the ball. Torpedo punt covering a lot of distance. Edge of the square. Free kick to Rewall, I thought. But no, the mark has been awarded to Cashin. Cashin will drive the ruse deep into attack. It's swinging away at the breeze. Garlic the target. Punched away from him by Thurgood. A loose ball. Rod Kelly leads in the race. He's got it. Coming in to assist him there is Gippard. Over the line and out of bounds. And another throw in. Well, we've talked about this crowd on a number of occasions through the match. The record crowd is in excess of 23,000. And there's every bit of that here today. Pilkington winning it again. But it goes to no one. Hughes has got it. He's still got the ball. He'll have to get rid of it. A little slow. Over the line. And another throw in. 25 minutes into the second quarter. As Pilkington and Chris Revolt doing battle. Pilkington gets the thump down. Going towards the boundary line again. David Cashin can't get it before it goes over. And we see once again a throw in. Pilkington and young Chris Revolt. Pilkington up high, but Revolt gets the tap well down to Hughes. He's got nowhere to go. Gets out of it cleverly, the hand pass across, looking for Moorcroft. But Thurgood's in there as well. Over the boundary line once again. A dull pattern of play, which has been a, it's been a good game so far. But uh, plenty of boundary throw-ins at the moment with this breeze going straight across the ground. Here's Van der Feen up this time. Comes to French, grabbed, gets it away. Goes to Pilkington, can't handle it. Picked up by Moorcroft. Moorcroft, a hand pass back over his head to Martin. Tries to take it out of the air, struggles it forward, and luckily for him, goes straight onto the chest of Greg Thurgood. Barely 10 metres, but it was far enough, said umpire Manson. Gee, I've been impressed by the umpiring, Bob. Yes, I think it's been first class. Greg Thurgood, poor kick into the centre. You can't waste them like that. It goes straight to Greg French. Greg French now a high one, giving plenty of air, the chance for the big leapers. Van der Feen in front, punched away by Dykes. Comes down to Studley. Oh. Play goes on once more. Long hand pass coming out. A good one towards Tony Barwick. Well shepherded by Pilkington. Tony Barwick goes across looking for Tim Wardham. He's got it, but he can't take it. Should have done. Spoiling each other. Free kick Clarence. Good up firing again. The Norky made a horrible mess of that because Timmy Wardham should have taken the mark. There's the kick now back towards the centre. They misjudged the flight of the ball. Dykes is there. So too is Holland. Wins the ball up towards centre half forward, but Robin Norris has taken the mark on the half back line. Another player who's pretty sore at the moment, too, is Moorcroft. He coughed a nasty one behind the play. Up goes Van der Feen, couldn't bring the ball down. Carried forward, ball, says the crowd. The umpire lets it go. It's up towards a nest of Rue players there. Rewalt takes it and passes on to Trivet. They're playing good football at the moment, the Ruse. Out towards the right street wing. It's a loose ball, tapped on there by uh, Tyson. Gets it down nicely to a teammate. Oh, it's on again in the, on the wing as umpire Les Manson goes into restore order. What a pity for the Clarence side too because they are moving forward with the ball and that brought a hold on their move. Umpires have been very busy from the first bounce. Umpire Manson sorts things out and as a result of that we're going to see a bounce out on the right street wing. Well, as I mentioned, bad luck for Clarence there because they're on their way to driving the ball into attack again. Up goes Pilkington. Hughes has got it. He's got it again. Lip puts it long in towards the forward line. Looking for Garlic. He's pushed out. No free kick. There's a chance. Kelly's got it. Running into an open goal. He kicks. And Kelly's put it through. And Clarence up 10 points in front. And the Rue crowd are going wild. Glenorchy 5 8 38. They trail Clarence 7 6 48. And there's Rod Kelly. He's always been a danger man. He's played some great games this year for the Ruse. And uh, through sheer persistence there, gained the ball on the half-forward line, ran into an open goal, and has put it through, and the Ruse are eight points in front. Yeah, it's a vital goal just before the half-time siren with 27, 28 minutes gone. That's the one that uh, Clarence so badly wanted to give them a break when they do go in. It's coming, they're going forward again. It's Barwick driving the Norky out of trouble. The mark taken by Ross Burns are very nearly. Danny Ling tries to break clear. Can't get through. 
Players falling down, eventually Ross Burns picks up, goes for a long hand pass. Out towards Holland's got it, he can't get clear. Coming through, Clarence pick up again through Doyle and he puts it straight onto the chest over there of David Garley. Garley goes for the long bomb right in towards the square. Up high, it's over the back towards Moorcroft. Moorcroft heavily felled. Can't get clear with the free ball. Kick. He's going to get a free kick for around the neck. And by gee, this is a vital goal because if Clarence can get this one, it's going to put them 16 points clear and that is a very, very handy lead. Bob, I tell you what's been the real difference in this quarter is that Clarence really want the hard ball. They certainly do, and they've dominated across their half-back line too. They haven't let Glorky through a call as Morkov kicks. It looks good, you can tell from the rest of the crowd. Straight through the middle, and Clarence now are running right. 16 points clear. Second goal to Neil Morkov, and you can see the pat on the back for him there from Rod Kelly. A tremendous effort. 8-6 Clarence, 54 Glorky, 5-8-38. And we're right on the 30-minute mark of the second quarter. I can't, uh, I think you can tell by the crowd, the Clarence crowd, the screams that are going on. Neil Moorcroft has been a vital player for them. And uh, I don't think the Norky have got enough time to get a goal back this quarter, so it's going to be a very serious thing for Jack Ruff at halftime. I think one of the reasons, too, is that Pilkington's gone out of the game a little bit. Rewalt wins it this time. Down goes Barwick. Must get the free kick. Nudged in the back, definitely there. And the Glenorchy wingman will take the kick. Here's Barwick. He'll have to move it forward quickly. Decides to put it up towards the half-forward line. Trippett is there, it's punched away. Moles hasn't had many touches so far in the game. Loses the ball, up towards Timmy Woodham. Down he goes. The fireman's on hands and knees. Umpire Clements blows the whistle and another bounce. Half-forward flank, the Magpies in attack. Boy, do they need a goal at the moment. They trail the ruse. It's been a great quarter for Clarence. They lead 54 to 38. Here's the bounce. Dying moments of the second quarter. Rewald again, who's really coming into it. And that's a very good defensive knock. Pumps it out of there, the air, over the line and out of bounds. It's a vital knock at the stage. Chris Revolt playing a wonderful game so far. There he is again. Down to Hughes, too. Hughes is coming up in this quarter. Still playing the ball. The tackle was pretty high on him. Gets it out to Trippett. Trippett handballs it back over his head. It's over the line. Umpire Clement says, throw it back in. There's the boundary throwing Curly in front. Revolt, a beautiful tap over the back to Greg French. Greg French, a high kick up now. See at the moment from North Hobart Oval, and that looks fairly ominous as the bounce is about to take place. Heavy black clouds out towards the south and southwest. Will it rain before we see the final siren? Clarence have the lead at the moment. 60 plays, 44. Umpire Gary Clements with the ball. And we're away now into the third quarter. Can the Magpies come back? Pilkington, who did so well in the first quarter, wins it this time, tapped on by Curley. In goes Bennett, down to Linton. Linton gets the kick up towards the half-forward line. Doyle is there, overruns the ball. It looks like uh, McCann, who might be down there on the half-forward line now for the Magpies. He started off at full-back, but here's the kick now out of the pack up towards the centre wing, right in front of our commentary position, over the line and out of bounds, and we'll see a throw in. Yes, Greg Thurgood's at full-back for the Magpies now, after kicking that great goal just before the half-time siren. As Pilkington gets the tap down, it's taken by Shane Gippard. He swings Clarence back, looking for Van Der Feen, and Van Der Feen uh, well, nearly taps more heavily, felled. Coming in, picking up Johnny Miles. The free kick is going to go. Clarence's way to be taken by Rod Hughes. Hughes sees the lead out there wide from Kelly, but he kicks it right over his head. An easy mark taken there by Craig Mark for the Magpies on the half-back line. A little back pocket. Drives into the centre, going right back across the ground and straight to McKay. McKay quickly on with play. He breaks clear well onto the left foot. Looking for Van Der Feen, left unguarded. And he takes the mark. Felled after he took it. Could be a 15-metre penalty. No, it's not going to be. Andrew Van Der Feen gets up. And uh, just over the centre square, Clarence's way, he will drive them well into attack. Had a great duel with Robbie Dyke so far today. There's a long kick holding up in the wind. Coming out a big pack of players. Tapped away from Revolt. There's a danger man. Moorcroft again. Picked up by Kelly. Scrambled forward. But the chance for Craig Martin to break through for the clear for the Magpies. He puts it right out towards Tony Barwick. And Barwick takes the ball. Well, to Barwick back now looking for Tim Woodham. And Woodham takes the mark well. Better play by the Magpies at the start of this quarter. There's Woodham now looking for Hudson. Hudson's a mile away from Leary. Leads right deep into the pocket. Well, Peter Hudson's kicked some miraculous goals today, but he's also missed some quite easy ones. This one would be an extremely hard one. Right to deep in the pocket in front of the scoreboard, 45 metres out, and uh, that wind is blowing around all over the place. 
Let's see what Peter Hudson can do. He's a free kick, as we know. I think it's through for one behind, and it is. Another point to the Magpies. They desperately need goals to bridge this 15-point margin that uh, they're behind at the moment. Noel Leary moved back on Peter Hudson in the second quarter. He put his reputation as the coach right on the line, and since then he's done a pretty good job on the champ, but it's early days yet. Here's Noel Leary. Any lead will be a handy one because you can see that the rain is beginning to fall over the Derwent at the moment as Leary kicks off. Out towards the half-back line. They fly high. A pack of players. Down they come. Picked up by Hughes. Hughes up into no, man, no man's land on the centre wing on the right street side of the ground. In goes Studley. He's had a pretty good game, Studley. Goes for a run now. Drives it back towards the forward line. Looking for Woodham. Up he goes. He had it. Could have got the free oh. kick, I thought. But no. It's uh, play on. Down goes Curley. They're down on hands and knees trying to win that ball. Picked up now by Gifford. And Gifford wins yet another kick. Up towards the right street wing. Van der Feen up a mile. Far too early. Down to Linton. Linton using his strength, but the kick is smothered. Goes back and after the ball. Trying to break a tackle. Gets his kick back towards the half-forward line. Over the head of all players there. Woodham's got it now. Goes for a hand pass. A poor one. Holland, can he gain possession of the ball? He does. Throws it away. In goes French. He's got it. Another pack and a bounce will result. I can feel the first bit of rain coming down, Mel. As you said, I think there's going to be a cloud burst very, very shortly. But there's the uh, ball up, tapped away by Bennett. Comes to Woodham. No one can get clear with the ball. Humpire Clements keeping a very close eye on proceedings and he decides to have a bounce. Robin Norris getting up with the ball, gives it back to Umpire Clements. And the big men fly. Tap for Bennett again, comes down to give Excel a chance. Hand pass to Gary Linton. Linton streaming out of the centre, puts a long one down towards Hudson. Spalding, punched away from Hudson, he recovers well. Leary falling on the ball, a chance for Danny Ling. Caught, tries to get the ball clear, but it's well trapped by the Clarence defenders and it goes over the boundary line in the forward pocket with uh, Glenorchy with its breeze right behind them, well in attack. Taken out of the ruck by Woodham. Woodham goes onto the left foot, swings around for goal. It's curling around, but not enough. And through for another behind. Lenorki peppering the goals. It can't get it between those two big white sticks. 16, Lenorki, 46. Trailing the ruse, 9-6, 60. And the rain is only minutes away. Oh, just inside the boundary line from Leary. Marking on the chest is Triffitt. While the ruse are in front. They've got the lead at the moment, and it could be a valuable one with the rain about to fall. It looks like it'll come down in bucketfuls. Here's the kick. Look at that breeze. It's picked up too. Up goes Moles. Second grab has been awarded the mark. One of the few uh, grabs that Johnny Moles has had today. He's been a disappointing player so far in this game, and Glenorchy desperately need him to fire. And that wind has really picked up. Johnny Moles on the half-forward flank for the Magpies, moving in to take the kick. A left-footer. The breeze carrying it across the face of goal. It may have been touched just inside the boundary line, and we'll see a throw in. <laughs> and uh, that was Bob Cheek that you could hear as that wind has really picked up and the rain begins to fall. Got to hang on to stop from being blown out of the commentary box at the moment. Here's uh, Curley, but out comes Doyle. Handballs it away back over his head. Linton's got the chance. He's got it again. Goes back and after it. Goes for a hand pass. A lot of pressure on him. Comes out there nicely to Exel. Exel with the kick up towards the pocket. Almost marked by Curley. It's still in play. Tapped out towards Woodham. He'll be met solidly there by uh, two Clarence players. It's over the line and out of bounds. Umpire Manson says, throw it back in. We heard a rumour that the crowd is in the vicinity of 25,000 people, which uh, would establish a new record for North Hobart Oval. The throw in again, and that rain is coming right in towards our commentary box at the moment, and I think we'll be wet between now and the finish. Doyle and Johnston. What a pity that the rain should come at this time of the day, and there's that big balloon on the uh, radio commentators and uh, the press uh, uh, pavilion there. Will it last the distance? Down towards Triffitt. Trippett using his strength has met solidly. Got the boot to ball, but only just. Players are finding it very difficult to score out of this forward pocket because the breeze is coming pretty well straight across the ground now, although it's favouring that goal, and they've got it on in their dead pocket, so to speak, and it's very, very difficult to break clear. You can see the way the players are kicking the ball. It's deviating several metres from its flight. Here they up, up high. Comes down to Wardham on the boundary line. Skids it in towards goal, and it's another point to the Pies. Well, they're certainly uh, doing the scoring, but they just can't find the opening for a goal, which they so desperately need. They're going now to 6-11-47, kicking this game a little way, a little bit. Clarence, 9-6-60. Noel Leary kicking out. It's a kick swinging around. He's going to the dead flank. Nearly a mark pulled down by Spalding. Trying to get the ball clear. Pilkington goes in, using his strength. Handball's out well to Curley. 
Curley is, uh, has it taken away from him well by Jeff Doyle, and Doyle puts it up towards a nest of Clarence players, and it's Chris Sporting who takes the mark and does it well. Chris Sporting from the half-back line. Look at his kick holding up in the breeze. There's Gary Linton, who's done well in the centre all day. Comes out and he takes the mark. Linton now up towards centre half forward. Norris and uh, Burns there. Norris comes out with the ball. He can't break clear. He's grabbed. It's picked up by Wardham. A good hand pass out to Holland, but Holland can't handle it at all. Made an attempt to get rid of it, said the umpire. Down goes Michael Tyson, grabbed by the leg, and he will get the free kick and put Clarence out of trouble. He goes for a hand pass, not a good one to French, but it comes off back to Norris. Norris on the left foot, putting it up towards Kelly. Kelly hand pass doesn't come unstuck. It was to uh, David Cashin. Craig Martin coming through strongly. Players who falling on the ball, desperate stuff. Not very much uh, science in the game at all at the moment because of this breeze. There's the bounce again. Crowded play there. Pilkington on the ball. Gets it down towards Dykes. Dykes quickly onto the boot, back towards the centre. Curley dropping down from the half-forward line has taken a mark on the chest. Wants to get on with it quickly with a big uh, punt kick up towards Hudson, but he's dropping back behind the pack there. A loose ball out towards Trippett. Trippett coming back through the pack, screws it back over the shoulder, out towards the uh, half-back flank. It's out of bounds midway between the half-back flank and the uh, centre wing with the uh, Magpies in attack. 47 play, 60 the lead with Clarence. 9, 6, 60, Glenorchy, 6, 11, 47. Pilkington again, gets it down there towards Exel. Does it well, Exel under the left foot, up towards Hudson in the forward pocket. Can he trap the ball? Still got it in front of him, but there's Leary, and Leary is playing him very closely indeed. He's no further than about six inches away from him at all occasions, and he's played a great game on the champion full forward since moving to full back. Here's the throw in. Mark Johnson having a go on the ball there, Doyle. Kicks it out towards the uh, half-back line. Bowles has marked. And from there, a chance to score. But he's going to have to allow for this breeze that is really rocketing in from the southwest. Here's Moles. Allowing for that breeze, and it's swinging right back in towards the goal square. A pack of Clarence players there. Martin is down underneath all that, I think. Had it for a moment. Or is it Ling? Danny Ling it is, picking himself up tired looking player too at this stage and no wonder a bounce about 12 meters out from the Glenorchy goal Leary up punches it out of the pack Woodham's got it snaps it back over the shoulder he's kicked it I think and oh. Tim Woodham has kicked a miraculous goal well he's had enough shots down there Timmy Woodham in his quarter enough chances but then he finally on the, that left foot of his cute angle on the boundary line was a magnificent goal and that's brought Glenorchy right back into the game once more as we, the rain is really starting to come down. You can see the umpire is flying up all around the ground. Timmy Woodham with Robin Norris on him. Timmy Woodham uh, played in three grand finals where he's been beaten, desperately wants this one. The bounce back in the centre again. Can the Magpies go in with it? John Miles coming into the game in this quarter. Gets it across to Barwick. They're throwing themselves at the ball, spoiling each other a little bit. Barwick gets up comes across now to Holland struggles to kick forward Curly flying after the ball with uh, Greg French and it goes out of bounds just near the right street stand and the uh, the Norky end of the right street stand there's the throw in now the ball comes over the back Miles in there again slips the tackle doesn't know where to go eventually hand passes over to Gary Linton Linton onto the left foot down to the half forward line, Hudson coming out after the ball. Can he get it before it goes out over the boundary line? He has it knocked away by Leary. Good play, Noel Leary. Bustled uh, Peter Hudson as he picks up the ball, gives it to the boundary umpire. And Peter Hudson hasn't kicked the goal since Noel Leary went on him in the second term. There's Big Bennett trying to take the ball away from Johnston. Picked up by Wardham again. Here he comes onto that left foot. It's over towards Hudson. But coming into mark is Tony Triffitt. Mr. Dependable, you can call him now, because by G safe on that back line. He's charging straight up the middle going to drop short. Miles in there again. French was the man in front that could nearly have been played. Cashin has looked to be grabbed around the leg. Holland gets the hand pass to Miles. Miles goes in towards goal. A hand passes back. He's heavily tackled. Spalding grab. Out there towards McCann. He's got a screen if he can pick up. He does. He fires towards goal. And he's put it through. I think he has. And the back fires are within one point of Clarence. Great comeback by Glenorchy. But you've got to remember they're kicking with a gale, with a gale at the moment. But uh, through sheer persistence and shots at goal, they've come back to be only one point behind. And the Magpie fans are really coming to life. Great effort there by Steve McCann, but he is well shepherded by a couple of teammates. You see the big, see the big football. He's, 
can tell the velocity of the wind, the way that football on top of the grandstand is jumping up and down, and I think it's going to snap those ropes pretty soon by the look of it. All right, Bob, I'll give you a chance to rug yourself up because I think we're set for a nice, wet and windy final half to this match. It's back into the centre. Umpire Clemens has got it, but no one's leaving the ground, I can assure you. Look at the wind carry that ball. Picked up by Curley, slams it back in the full forward position towards Hudson. Clever mark. Great mark, Peter Hudson. Had the drop there on the Noel Leary, but he judged that to perfection. When it's a side-by-side -side duel, Peter Hudson wins out nine times out of ten. And Peter Hudson has already kicked four. With this kick, can put the Magpies back in front. A long way to go yet, though. We've played about 13 minutes, and the breeze that's blowing is favouring that in, so they certainly need a big quarter. Here's the kick by Hudson. The crowd reaction is good. It's a goal. And Peter Hudson has banged it through the centre, and the Magpies are back in front. Five points the difference. Glenorchy 9-11-65, Clarence 9-6-60. And there's Noel Leary and uh, Peter Hudson, and you can see uh, a rather worried look on Noel Leary's face there momentarily. But, of course, if this wind keeps blowing the way it is, the, uh, the uh, Clarence side will come home with the breeze. Yes, the only danger, of course, is that uh, the ball will probably get very wet and slippery, and if the wind did happen to drop with this rain coming down, as it could easily do, uh, well, then we find that Glenorchy, having had the use of this wind in early in the third quarter, might have an advantage. We'll have to wait and see, but certainly if it does keep up, they'll need four or five goals for Glenorchy to, uh, to have a chance. The game hots up now out of the centre. Free kick paid, and it's going to go Glenorchy's way to Tony Bowie. The Magpies getting well on top at the start of this quarter. Tony Barwick, been a pretty good player all day, runs around his opponent, doesn't gain a great deal though. He puts it up in the air, coming up from behind. It's Tim Wood, and he pulled down, it's nearly pulled down a screener. Might have been paid. Free kick going to go to Glenorchy again. It's going to be taken by the cockroach, Danny Ling. So Danny Ling could easily uh, kick that. Clarence looking very rattled at the moment in that back line. It's offline, however, just offline, and through for one behind. So Glenorchy now goes six points clear. 9-12-66, Clarence 9-6-60. The crowd might be getting pretty saturated at the moment with this rain coming down heavily, but certainly none of this 25,000 crowd, or we estimate 25,000 crowd, are leaving the ground. Well, this game's had everything from the first bounce. The kickoff now by Leary. Six points the difference, the Magpies in front. A slippery ball, wet, wintry conditions now after sunshine for the first half of the match. Handballed out. Bowles is there. He's got three or four to beat. Vanderfee's having a run on the ball too, using his weight against Bowles. There's desperation for you. Hands and knees, Ray Owen. The boundary umpire having a bit of trouble separating the players. They're uh, looming around menacingly. Yes. But, uh, nothing came of it, fortunately. A little bit of frustration creeping into the game. Here's the throw in now. Pilkington is there. Leading in the race for this French. French with his kick is spotted. The Magpies are really starting to move now as Barwick bangs it in towards the half forward line looking for Woodham. It's over the back of the pack. Leary leads in the race for the ball. Oh, Doyle and Hudson exchanging uh, pleasantries there behind the ground. The, uh, yeah, you see the umpire the going to separate them, but in the meantime, Tony Barwick marks. You see Peter Hudson calling for the ball, and will Tony Barwick put it up where Peter Hudson wants it? He has, but can he mark it? Stumped down by Bennett dangerously into the square. Picked up by Clarence and driven out of trouble. And Robin Norris dies to the ball, can't pick it up. Gary Linton comes in, intercepting was Donnie Holland over towards Linton again. Diving on the ball, Jeff Doyle, I think it is. You can't see him down there uh, beneath the players. And eventually getting another Shane Giffard, getting up with the ball. And we're going to have a bounce right in the teeth of the goal. Dangerous days for Clarence at the moment. Only about 25 metres out from that goal. Mark Johnson gets up with Revolt. Good tap, Revolt. Right towards the boundary line. A good defending tap. And it's going to go over the boundary line, in fact, near the scoreboard. With Glenorchy, six points up. And the rain really starting to team down. Here's the throw in. Mark Johnson and Rewalt. Mark Johnson wins it. Down to Hughes, though. Hughes' kick is up towards the half-back flank. Whoever wants to win the hard ball will win the premiership. Oh, down goes Barwick. He caught the pretty high one. Could be out of bounds on the full. It is. And the free kick will be taken down there in the last line of defence in the back pocket. It looks like Giffard out there. And the rain is coming right into our commentary box at the moment. We're, We're trying to keep our uh, notes nice and uh, We've got dry. We've got a policeman coming up the ladder to see us at the moment, Mel, but I don't think he wants to put you in jail or anything. Well, I know. I'm, I'm all clean. The mark uh, taken by Bumpy Trippett. Here's Trippett now at the ball. Trippett takes the kick, holding up in the breeze, up towards the uh, centre of the ground. Pilkin one-handed. Van Der Fee popped a high one. 
It's been kicked across the ground out towards the centre wing society side of the ground. Cashin leads in the race. He's got three to beat. Magpies are everywhere at the moment. Dykes well. down on hands and knees, taps it back towards Garlic. Garlic was met solidly there by Owen. Owen's got the ball. His kick is a short one. It's a beautifully directed kick to Holland. Holland runs through the centre. Slams it down towards Hudson in the full forward position. Leary playing in front of him there. It's down on the turf. Curley goes in after it. Pushed over. Playing for the free kick. Good umpiring. Down goes Burns. It's now over the line and out of bounds. Umpire Gary Clement says it's mine. Throw it back in. No, he's not. He's going to bounce it about a metre or two inside the boundary line with the Magpies in front. Five points the difference. Rewalt thumps it towards the boundary line. And again, it's over the line and out of bounds. And this time, we'll certainly see a throw in. Anoki 9-12-66 have fought their way back into the front in the third quarter. Clarence 9-6-60. There's the throw in. Mark Johnson doing a lot of ruck work down there, but it's tapped out well. Picked up by Hughes, driven forward towards Tyson. And once again, as we're going to see uh, a lot of this for the rest of the match, no doubt a boundary throw in. So that goal lead is going to be handy for Gnorki. The way the rain is coming down the wind, I think maybe dropping a fraction too. There's the kick up towards the wing for Clarence. Overrunning the ball was Franks. Studied the chance. He's driven into the ground. The umpires are not playing a free kick for anything as Dyke gets up, breaks clear with sheer strength. Well done, Robbie Dykes. That puts it to Kim Axel. Kim Axel marked uh, right on the wing position and uh, he'll be looking, no doubt, for Hudson as he puts it down to him. Slippery ball, Leary in front. Takes a good mark. The Norky defenders uh, forward stood down and let Noel Leary go for the ball because they thought with a slippery pill that he may drop it, but he didn't. He grabbed onto it and did it well. Holding up in the breeze, Leary's kick. Thumped down by Dykes. French. Study the chance as he comes through. You see how slippery that ball is getting. Coming through David Cashin. Franks falling on the ball with him, trying to pick it up. Still in play. Franks has got it again. Having a little old time waltz with Shane Giffard, but eventually it goes over the boundary line for a throw in. Here it is, the throw in right in front of our commentary position. It's Pilkington and Rewalt. Pilkington wins it, gets it down to Holland. Holland is trapped, didn't have the ball, the tackle too high, and Don Holland will get the free kick. He's got plenty of grabs today, but he's been caught with the ball on numerous occasions, Donnie Holland. Here's the kick high up towards the half forward line. Hudson well out from goal, punched away by Leary. Linton is there, he's got the ball in front of him, can't pick it up. Here's Doyle, he's a, a dasher, this fellow. Puts it on the left foot, kicks it back towards the half-back line. Rewald is there, so too is Pilkington. Dropped one that he should have taken. In goes Bowles, still got the ball. The players and the umpires letting it go. It rebounds out of the pack to Trippett. Trippett puts in a short one, it's well directed. Good It'll pass. come off Sue, good pass. Beautiful defensive pass there, and it's been marked by Tyson. Here's Tyson. Kicking the ruse of their forward line down towards Vanderpeen. Vanderpeen front position. Boy, they're playing a strong game on Vanderpeen. He's had two or three to beat all day. Robbie Dykes coming in to assist him there is Franks. Another throw in. That rain is still coming down, and we'll see it right to the final siren. Pilkington getting into the back there of Rewalt. But here's a chance now for Tyson again. Drives the ruse towards the forward pocket. Garlic is there. Garlic's got it, appealing for the mark. No worries about that. Thurgood had the first grab. Back to the play, back to the half-back line. A chance now for Moorcroft. Back to Tyson. Good play, Tyson steaming it towards goal. He kicks. It may have just missed. One point. One point only. And we see Gnocchi 9-12-66. Clarence 9-7-61. Five points the difference. 20-minute mark of the third term. Greg Thurgood with the ball. Wondering where to kick it. Good drop punt kick. Nearly to the wing, up high was uh, Moles, Giffard grabbed, he was around the neck, and will get the free kick. And Giffard, hasn't been a brilliant player today, but always creative and trying to do something. There's his kick now up the centre half forward. Big pack up, dumped away by Franks, comes down to French, struggles to kick forward up to Gary Linton, down towards Franks again, kicks it off the table, and it's going over the boundary line. The big fellow nope. just couldn't bend over to pick that one up. Bob. No, he played safe, and probably just as well he did because that ball is not easy to pick up at the moment. So it's going to be a battle of courage and determination is going to win this game. Probably not so much skill at the moment. There's the kick out of trouble for Gnorki. Cashin's mark. Cashin will be paid it, and he's going to take the kick slightly Clarence's way, but uh, deep on the boundary line. There's the kick up the centre half forward now. A swamp, uh, Vanderpeen swamp, recovers well, grab, gets the hand pass away. 
punched away by Owen. A, a stupid play, really. French has got the chance. Gives it back to Shane Gippard. Gippard running nowhere. Dick gets a hand pass in that's uh, blocked again. Hughes coming through once more. Great play. Puts it up, but straight onto the chest of Ray Owen. Here's Ray Owen with the ball. Last line of defence for the Magpies. It's wet, wintry, and dark at the moment. There's the kick back towards the edge of the square. But Greg French puts in a short one now. It's well directed towards centre half forward. Down goes Kelly. Picked up now by Martin. That will relieve the pressure a little bit. No, it won't. Out there taking the mark on his own Mackay. Mackay with a handball to Norris. Norris with a left foot pass. Beautiful pass. Has hit Andrew Vanderfeen on the chest. Vanderfeen, 40 metres out from goal. If he can score a major from there, the Roos will be back in front at the 22 minute mark of the third term. A lot of the brilliance will go out of the game now that the rain has begun to fall. But of course, this is what grand finals are all about. Listen to the hoots of the crowd as Vanderfeen kicks. The goal umpire doesn't move. The Roos are back in front. Andrew Vanderfeen who's played his heart out for the uh, Ruse this afternoon. Really happy with himself there. A beautifully directed pass from uh, Robin Norris. Vanderfeet on hands and knees, marking on his chest about 40 metres out. Didn't let his team or supporters down, and he slammed it through the centre. Let's check the scoreboard. Glenorchy, 9-12-66. Clarence, 10-7-67. A point for difference. Bobchick. Right back in the centre of the ground. That was a good pass from Robin Norris. Not a bad pass from the back man. He was well up the ground. It's up again. Moles running for the ball. He's trying to go through, but there's no free kicks played in this game, or very few. And it goes on again. It's, uh, Moles grabs the ball again. He's running nowhere. Gets a hand pass across to Craig Martin. Martin lets fly up to the wing. Gippard tries to go three or four. Tried to burst his way through the pack. Eventually claimed, and the umpire will bounce the ball. Well, what a game we're seeing, Bob. Certainly is. Certainly a great game of football. Despite this rain, there's still plenty of interest in the game. Pilton tries to crash his way through the pack with a free kick earlier. It's been paid to Neil Moorcroft. A 15-metre penalty and a pretty long one at that as Clarence start to get right back on top again in this game. A good mark there to uh, Rod Kelly, it looks like. Rod Kelly on the half-forward flank. See how has the breeze which is going across the ground a bit as well. He'd have a, a little bit of advantage of the breeze over there. Certainly not as bad as kicking into it from the other side. And so on the Ride Street uh, side of the ground, Rod Kelly will try to put the ruse seven points up. And if he did, it certainly would be handy. There's his kick. Offline. You can hear the deafening blast of the crowd as they tried to ride that one through, or at least the Clarence supporters did but through for one behind. So Cla uh, Clarence, the Roos now go two points up, 68 to 66. The Roos two points in front, but remember they're going to come home with the aid of this slight breeze that's now blowing. There's the kick out by uh, uh, the uh, Glenorchy fullback and Thurgood. Here's Linton, he's got it. Scrag, but gets boot to ball. And X was taking the mark on the chest. Good handball to to Ling. Ling will be met solidly here by Doyle, but he sidesteps him brilliantly. Thumps it down towards Hudson at full forward. Up he oh. goes! And has pulled out a beautiful mark. We can see how much trouble the other players have had handling the ball, but with Peter Hudson with those great big hands, it was just one hit, and it stuck like glue. That really brought the large crowd that's still here. They're not leaving the ground. Really brought them to their feet. Great mark by the champion full forward. Last game, moving in to take the kick. Ugly looking old kick, but I think it's no, just this. Well, we're back to a point, the difference. Glenorchy 9, 13, 67. Clarence 10, 8, 68. Back now to the players. It's taken off by uh, Triffitt there. His kick is holding up in the breeze up towards Gippard. Great mark, Gippard. But he's a go of this fellow. Strong mark on the chest. And now a 15-metre penalty. And Gippard will take advantage of that as he drives it up and over the centre wing. Down towards Vanderfeet at centre-half forward. Punched away from him. Here's Moorcroft. Goes to hand pass the ball. Back in after it. Free kick. And Neil Moorcroft will take the kick just short of the half-forward flank for the Ruse. Crowded play on their forward line. Vanderfeet again is the target. No mark. A loose ball picked up by Linton again. Linton under pressure out towards the centre wing. Society into the ground. Here's Gippard again. Gippard has lost the run of the ball. Out towards uh, Owen. Down he goes. Picked up by now by Moles. And the left foot is away. Thumps it down towards centre half forward. Almost a mark down there to a teammate in Holland. Goes back and after it. We'll kick it uh, across towards the centre-half forward position. 
No mark. It's play on. McCann's got it. Running into an open goal. He's popped it through. What's happened? Yes, he's being paid. The uh, goal umpire's waiting on the umpire's all clear then. It's right through the middle. And so the are uh, back in front by five points. What a game of football. Tremendous match. Even though the rain's pouring down, it's not nothing at all. And that was Steve McCann's second goal. And uh, a good move to switch him uh, onto the forward line after playing full back. He went onto the forward line after half time and he stuck through two in this quarter. And the Magpies four five points up as Pilkington gets the ball down towards Linton. Linton's playing, gets it to Miles. Miles out again. Cash and dump before he can kick the ball. Umpire Manson moving in and he's going to have a bounce. A Glenorchy player in trouble too. Trainers coming out to him. Gary Linton, he'd be the last man they want to lose at this stage. Pilkington, the big thump, coming out to meet the ball, Triffitt. Well backed up by Burns. Back into the centre of the ground, Moorcroft under the ball. Can't take it. Bill Moorcroft played a great game and he gets up from nowhere. Strag this time. Play goes on. Train, as you can see in the background, probably uh, around Gary Linton and he doesn't look too good at all. Trying to walk away, but uh, maybe uh, leaving him now. He's saying he's all right, I think. Had a, a knee injury uh, earlier in the year, which uh, put him out for a long while. Let's hope for, for Menorchy's sake it's not a recurrence of that. A shame Giffard takes it. Up towards Franks, coming out Thurgood. Gets it just inside the boundary line. Goes for a hand pass. Up towards Robbie Dykes. Dykes down, slips over. And uh, it's certainly getting pretty slippery there at the moment. Umpire Les Manson coming in. Robbie Dykes is going to get a... No, he's not going to get a free kick. He's trying to, <laughs> to bluff the umpire into giving him one, but the boundary umpire took the ball off him. And there's the end of the third quarter. Milwaukee five points up. Maybe not enough for this breeze. Only time will tell. 10-13, 73. Clarence, 10-8, 68. Ooh. What was that score again? Bob? Oh, oh, gee. What? Milwaukee. 10-13, 10-8, mate. I've got no overwriting anything down here, so... 10-13. To what? Yep. 10-13 to 10-8. Uh, to 10-8, yeah. What did I say? 6-8. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, I'm wet. <sighs> so are you. 4-5. Yeah. <laughs> OK, here we go now at the final term of the 1979 TFL Grand Final. Five points the difference, the Magpies in front, anyone's game. Up goes Pilkington, thumped on there by Giffard. In goes Cash and kicking it off the turf there was a Clarence player. A pack on the half forward line, they're working in towards the attack. Picked up by Dykes now in a long sleeve Guernsey. Back towards the centre, Robin Norris gets booted the ball. In goes Pilkington using his strength, his kick is smothered. This will be a tough, hard final term of football with the uh, Premiership flag at stake. Back into the centre, five points the difference, 10-13-73 to 10-8-68. A loose ball, the rain is coming down even heavier now, kicking it out as uh, Tyson with a big left footer down towards the half-back line. Martin has dropped it, pushed to the turf, I thought. Here's Garlic, the umpires will let it go. Garlic trying to work his way around onto the left foot. That's a free kick. Free kick against him. Didn't make a great enough effort to get rid of the ball. And uh, here's Greg Thurgood, whose uh, permanent wave is looking pretty soggy at the moment. <laughs> yes, you'll need a new one next week, that's for sure. There's the kick by Greg Thurgood up to the wing. It's going straight to Revolt, but Pilkington's in the way also. Chris Paulding tries to struggle it forward. In the clear, Greg French. Greg French straight down the middle. Garlic. Good mark, Robbie Dykes. Well, experience is going to tell probably now in this game. And he couldn't get a better man back there in a tough situation than this fellow who's going to kick the ball now. Oh, not much of a kick, though, off the side of the boot. Coming down towards McKay. He's grabbed, and he's going to be free-kicked. Free-kicked Lenorki's way. Too slow getting rid of the ball there. And it's going to go to Tony Barwick. Tony Barwick. In the half-back line. Pilkington in front, taps it over the head to Linton. Linton puts it up. Hudson's got Bennett and Leary on him. They're struggling. Hudson's got it. He kicks in towards goal. It's here. It rolls. It's going to roll through, I think. McCann had it on the line. He touched it. Golden opportunity for the North. He missed. He could have just stuck his boot to that ball, I think, or if he hadn't touched it, probably would have gone through anyway. Bumpy Triffitt 
Six points clear now, Glenorchy. Bumpy Trevor tries to get on with play. It might be a bit unfair then, perhaps, to uh, uh, Glenorchy because Clarence defenders were closing on the ball, but it was a great opportunity missed. There's Tony Triffitt now. A long kick out to the wing. Burns was up high. Falls over as he tries to kick it. Survival of the fittest out there at the moment. Who will it be? Glenorchy clinging to this six-point lead. Trainers out there giving attention to... Uh, couple of players and umpire Manson indicating where he's going to bounce the ball. He won't be able to bounce it for much longer the way this rain's coming down. Pilkington and Revolt thumped forward by Giffard. Off the table by Moorcroft. Vanderfeen in. Falling on the ball, Dykes tries to struggle it clear. Players in there everywhere. We will have to have another bounce as the runner from Bob Whitehouse brings David Cashin off for Clarence. Here's the bounce. Umpire Clements. Goals will be hard to score in this final term. Here's Moles, the kick is smothered. Crowded play almost in the centre of the ground. We'll see a lot of this in the final term. A Clarence player there holding his head. That looks like Van Der Feen must have caught one in uh, that encounter. Pretty sore, or is it Moorcroft? It's Moorcroft. Here's the centre anyway. Poor old Moorcroft is down. Uh, behind play, but it goes on. Here's Giffard going for a hand pass. They'll have to stop play in a moment, I think, because uh, Moorcroft is in a lot of trouble there, and uh, he's getting in the way of the players. We'll just have a look what's going on out there. There's Moorcroft. Let's hope he's all right, uh, Neil Moorcroft, because he's played a great game for his side today. It'll be a, a bad way to finish. You can see them all, trainers all around him. He's trying to get up, but I don't think he knows much about the game at the moment. They're calling and for a fact, stretcher. In fact, they're going to carry him off. What bad luck for Neil Moorcroft. But oh, Clarence does happen to win this game. Well, they can thank him a heck of a lot for uh, getting there. He appears to be concussed. You yeah, can see that there's blood see, coming see the from the nose and mouth. mouth. Uh, an unfortunate incident. Here it is, back to the play, the bounce. The grand final continues. Pilkington goes up. Here's Ling trying to come through the pack. He does. Kicks it up towards the centre half forward position. Big Bennett. Oh, picks it up like a rover. Runs into a bit of trouble there, though, in Don Holland. There's another player down on the other side of the ground, too, as we see. It looks like a Glenorchy player receiving attention, but back to the play. He's quickly up and he saw the ball coming near him. Here's Ling. On the left, put in towards the forward pocket, up towards uh, Exel. Can't bring the ball in, it's out of bounds in front of the main grandstand. A goal, the difference, the Magpies in front, plenty of time left. We've played about four and a half minutes into the final That's a throw in now in front of the big stand. Revolt, a brilliant tap down and up to the wing, but right on the chest of John Pilkington. He'll drive the ball long, he does, it's right up the direction, backing back underneath it was a can, but he can't take it. And over the boundary line for a throw in in the forward pocket. Six points in front, Glenorchy. Only about ten metres around from their left-hand point post. We'll see Mark Johnston, who's uh, dwarfed by Revolt, but he comes in there and taps it down pretty well. Tim Howard on now, trying to get it clear. Players really showing desperation. Who's going to pick up the ball this time? Leary in there, trying to hand pass out. Eventually, Clarence clear, and they do it well. Vanderfeen. Felled heavily. Pilkington over towards... I don't know who that Glenorchy player was, but he's put it out of bounds on the full. Might have been Ray Owen, I think. And he's put it out of bounds on the full. And the free kick to be taken for Clarence by Jeff Doyle. There's Doyle's kick up towards the centre wing, looking for Van Der Feen. It's off hands, a loose ball at the back of the pack. A chance there for Owen. Goes for the hand pass towards Miles in the centre. A high tackle on Miles. No, it's against Miles for holding the ball. Well, he could have been a little unlucky there. You can see how Murphy it is out there at the moment. And uh, it's Kelly who kicks the ruse down towards their half-forward line. Garlic! A long way out from goal, at full stretch, is marked on the chest. He's on the half-forward line. He'd be 55 metres to 60 metres out. A long way out from goal, but a goal from here would level the scores. David Garlick taking a ton of time with his kick. Very important kick. That breeze has really dropped now, and the rain is beginning to ease. As Garlick comes in to take the kick, a left-footer, a tremendous kick. It could be thrown. It is. What a goal. One of the best goals I've seen kicked all year. A real pressure goal from David Garlick. I told you it was a straight kick. <laughs> well, you nominated it earlier, Bob. The scores are dead level in the 1978 TFL Grand Final. Seven minutes into the final term. Still anyone's game. Let's hope it's not a draw. Well, Let's I hope we get a result. I think it, and there's Neil Moorcroft, who's played his heart out for the uh, Roos yeah. this afternoon. A sorry sight as he leaves the ground on the stretcher. There's the ball up again now. John Pilkington up high. The score is dead level. Coming out now as Clarence trying to struggle the ball forward. Robin Norris picks up his grab. Taken by Donnie Holland. Can't get a kick in. My dear, kick's worth a lot at the moment. 
taken by Howard. A hand pass to nobody as Licton screams after the ball and also coming in Studley. Studley struggles at forward a little bit more, but over the boundary line and out of uh, out of bounds, actually enough. I, I think the TFL would be happy if it was a draw next week, Mel, if they get another 20,000 odd crowd here as Pilkington comes in, tapped down by Reefold, but Johnston's in the way. He puts it out in the open. Coming through, Norris picks up. Hand pass, a little bit of stray, picked up by Tim Howard. Over to Oil, oh, kicked off the ground, turns his way by Glenorchy defender. Gephardt falls on the ball, taps it forward towards Van der Feen. Coming out Glenorchy, putting up right towards McCann, but Norris in the way. Robin Norris out of the centre of the ground. Down towards Garlic, and in front Van der Feen, and it's going to be paid to Andrew Van der Feen. Andrew Van der Feen, 45 metres out, and this goal, you see him limbering up there with his foot, this goal would put the Roos six points up, and by G with that incentive to hold that lead, they're going to be very, very hard to run down. Whatever happens, I'm sure it'll be a score, which will at least put them in front. Andrew Van der Feen. There it is. Pretty close. Not quite there, I don't think. Touched as it went through. And through for one behind. But Clarence are in front. In front by a point. So the Roos have only got to stay there to have the 1979 flag over on the eastern shore. Right, back to the play. Greg Thurgood with it now. The Magpies will want to work it into attack as soon as possible. Nine minutes into the final term. Litton doesn't let him down. Up he goes and takes the mark on the chest. He's been one of the better players for the Magpie lineup all day, this fellow. Just over the half-back line, his kick is a shocker. His knee's gone. His knee is uh, playing up at the moment, but it's been marked on the centre wing by Roland Curley. And Curley's been pretty quiet today. Here's Curley up towards the half-forward line, looking for McCann. It's out towards the boundary line, leading in the race with a very tired Robin Norris. He'll need to, need to uh, use all of his experience in the final term in defence for the Roos. A throw-in, the Magpies in attack on their half-forward line. Woodham having a go at the ball, opposed to Rewalt. Woodham still got it, tries to back his way out of the pack. Down he goes, it's still in play. Burns goes for a hand pass, intercepted by Mark Johnson. Down on hands and knees is uh, Mackay. He's dragged off the ball, and another throw-in. The Roos are in front by a point. 74 plays 75. A boundary throw-in. See Mark Johnston there with Revolt. Revolt gets it down well with Danny Ling. Intercepts, he's trying to pick it up, getting the ball in front of him. He can't get clear, though, and it's over the boundary line for a throw-in, practically in the same place that it went out before. So it's going to be hard work to get a goal from here for either side, but the next goal could easily win the game. Mark Johnston looked to be held there. Tim Howard coming through. Tony Barwick overruns it, dives on the ball again. Curley over towards Moles. He sat down. Can't get clear of the ball, and umpire Larry Clements will come in to uh, have a ball up. The Roos a point up. Pilkington thumps it forward towards Norris. Ling gets it into the clear. Leary there. Leary will clear Clarence out into the centre of the ground. Underneath it was uh, Studley. Can't take the mark. Moles trying to get clear. Gets a hand pass out towards Ray Owen. Ray Owen runs into a stack of trouble. Sporting trying to kick off the ground, he does so to put it over the boundary line for a throw in 10 minute mark. Last quarter, crowd going wild with excitement as they're trying to urge their respective sides on. There's the throw in, the rocket counter between Pilkington. Picked up out of the pack, a chance now for Studley to mark. He's dropped it, but he's still got the run of the ball. Gets his left boot to it up towards the half forward line. Pushed out there, the free kick, it was there. And Ross Burns will take it, nudged in the back by Steve McCann. One by Clements right on it. And the free kick is with Ross Burns. Midway between the centre of the ground and the centre half back position. Beautiful big torpedo punt down towards Vanderfeen. The ball is punched away from him. A clearance by a bit solidly there by the uh, Milwaukee Flyers. Oh, there was one thrown, but it's kicked towards the forward line by French. Kelly tries to sock it off the turn. Desperation by uh, Craig Martin. It's in the forward pocket. That's now over the line and out of bounds. The throw in about two metres around from the Clarence goal with the Roos in attack. Here's the throw in. A score from here would be handy. Loose ball. Back of the pack there is Studley. Down on hands and knees going in after the ball. Umpire Manson blows the whistle out there the bounce. About 15 metres out from the Clarence goal. We're at a point in front. About 12 minutes into the final term. Can they keep it in attack? Straight to Gifford. Tries to burst his way through the pack. He's lost it. A loose ball, it's in the forward pocket. Desperate stuff, it's on the boundary line. And I think the uh, boundary umpire will now judge that ball as being out of bounds, and he'll say throw it back in. 
a point the difference and this huge crowd really enjoying the 1978 grand final Van Der Feen took it out of the air stepped it in towards goal but the kick was a poor one up towards the half back line Barwick was there here's a chance for Chadwick kicks it in towards goal it'll score I think I think it's out of bounds on the fall no a point. point must have just scraped in so the rooms are two points in front let's check the scoreboard we see Clarence 11 10 76 Milwaukee 10 14 74 two points the difference as the rain begins to fall once more it's all yours Bobchick wow yes and the breeze is springing up once more also so waiting to get the ball back anyone's game really although Clarence with that lead are in the box seat of course ball eventually uh, another ball being kicked back by Robin Norris and it's unfortunate we have to wait so much time for the footballs to, uh, when it's, uh, it's out of bounds or a point kick, we have to wait so much time for the ball to be collected and taken back to the fullback. But now it's there. And Greg Thurgood will kick out. Kicking to the pack. And a big pack it is too. Up high, nobody can take it. And it looks like it's going to go over the boundary line. On the half forward line with Clarence. For Clarence. There's a throw in. Pilkington a revolt. Pilkington down. McKay, can't get clear. Lincoln trying to pick the ball up. He's uh, on one leg at the moment, injured. Holding the ball, says the umpire. Didn't give him much chance to get rid of it. But it's Clarence's free kick to be taken by Michael Tyson. Mike Tyson with the ball. Play on, runs around the mark and swings it back in. The Lockie players spoiling each other. They could crash through the ball, Studley trying to pick it up. On the half forward line, for the Roos, we're going to have another bounce. The Clarence have only got to keep it down there. They've only got to keep it down there to take out this flag. It's up again. Frank's in there, revolt, taken by, nearly taken by Van Der Feen. On the ball, they fall again. And another bounce. Wow, it's a desperate stuff. Don't be misled by that bright sunshine. It's still raining and heavily. And freezing cold to, to boot. There's the punch down now, it's taken, was taken by Gnorky, but around the neck decision, and he's rather lucky to kick that too, I feel. Robbie Dykes. And it went to Robbie Dykes. So Robbie Dykes will try to drive them out of trouble. Peter Hudson must be getting very cold up there at full forward, I should think. He uh, hasn't seen much of the ball lately. I'll give you a spell, Bob. Here's uh, Robbie Dykes. Do the magpies need to get the ball up into attack quickly? He's short of the half-back line, a tired player too, as he kicks it up towards the centre wing. Pilkington is his target. Doesn't bring the ball down. Mackay is there, tries to sock it off the turf. Pilkington is back and they're doing battle to his side. Over the line. Throw it in. Two points the difference. The Roos in front. Rewalt doing well now too. Tries to get it down to Hughes. Here's a chance for Barwick trying to burst his way through the pack. Down he goes. Tapped on by Mackay. Desperate stuff at the moment. Any score is a handy score in conditions like this. Yes, I think you could pretty safely say the next goal will uh, probably win it for either side. It's not that hard to get at the moment, goals. There's Hughes burrowing his way in the pack, trying to win it out. Desperation as he forces it out to the pack. Gets it down to Kelly. Kelly gets a short one in for Chadwick. Chadwick with a hand pass up towards Van Der Feen. Van Der Feen's got the ball in front of him. But the uh, player Dykes is strong. Down goes Van Der Feen. Taps it out here to Garlic. Garlic with a hand pass. Can they capitalise on this forward move? No. Over the line and out of bounds. Another throw in. Two points the difference midway through the final term. 15 and a half minutes played. Up goes Frank's front position this time. Here's Hughes, snaps it in towards goal. Won't even score. That breeze is rather difficult down there in that pocket. It's been bottled up there. And again, it's out of bounds. And another throw in. Well, we haven't seen down the centre line. Uh, Glenorchy's way much in this quarter as uh, Brock Franks gets the ball down. It's been the whistle has blown. And uh, we're going to see another throw in, I think. That's just how difficult that wind is, Bob. It's freshened again. Yeah, it's blowing straight across the ground. Here we see Rod Franks and Van Der Feen in. Van Der Feen down to Shane Giffard. Giffard had the shot towards goal. It's curling around underneath it. Now the Glenorchy backs coming through Thurgood. Trying to drive it. Third goes to Tyson. To Ling. Ling's got it in front of him. Suckers it off the ground. Off the chest of Robin Norris. And Robin Norris across the centre line this last quarter is really holding the Magpies up. He's going for a short kick, it's in towards Hughes, but a great mark by Murray Studley. 
That's not a mark. It's play on to the umpire. I thought it was. Out to Owen. Owen towards Tony Barwick. On again towards Tyson. Hand pass over towards Howard. It's impossible to call this game at the moment. It's a free kick being picked out, and it's going to go the Norkies way to Donny Holland. There's so many players handling the ball, not being able to get a kick in. I think uh, we have about 18 on the ball. It's up towards Norris. Hilton comes out. The big fellow is trying desperately to put his side into attack. He can't get it. Back it comes towards Hilton in again. Dispossessed of the ball. Didn't have any chance to get rid of that. You can see the players crawling about in the mud at the moment. Hello. And the umpires coming in to separate Pilkington and Trippett. And a very tight calm down. Bumpy Trippett picks himself up after that little encounter with Big John Pilkington. Not the, uh, the easiest man to pick a wrestle with by any means. A defensive thump. Umpire Manson telling the boundary umpire to throw it back in. Well, time is ticking away. 17 minutes now into the final term. The Roos are in front by two points. Rewalt wins it again. Straight down to Gippard. Gippard gets booted the ball. Down towards Vanderfeet. He's got the ball. Tries to force it out in front of him. They're down on hands and knees. Robbie Dykes playing his heart out. Picked up there by Holland. The kick has come off as Mark Johnson is marked. On the centre wing, on the society side of the ground. He drives it into the forward line towards Hudson. He's opposed there to Leary. Oh. Hudson almost took the mark. Play on. Gee, Wes, he should have got a free kick. Well, that's the way things go, Bob, in pressure grand finals. The umpire, he's the man who's got to make the decisions, and he said, let it go. Up over the back, rewind straight to Woodham. Woodham runs around a teammate, trying to work his way to the left boot, he can't. There's Moles, he's got it, tackled, throws the ball out in front of him towards Lee. Down he goes. A pack of players down there. The umpire now blows the whistle. What's going to happen? A free, free kick. kick off his way. To be taken by Mark Johnston. No, it's not. It's going back to Danny Lee. And Danny Lee. Well, just listen to that crowd, will you? There's his kick up towards the edge of the square. Hudson is there. He's, he's marked, marked it. it. He's marked it from nowhere. Well, Peter Hudson Mel, may have kicked 200 goals in his glory in this season and in the glorious career done many things. But would he ever have a more crucial kick for goal than this one? And what a crucial slip to Mel Leary. Slip at the vital moment. He's going well to take that mark. Could well win the premiership for Gnocchi if he gets it. Here's the kick. He gets it. And the Gnocchi out hit the front. The Magpies are in front. Let's check the scoreboard. Gnocchi, 11, 14, 80. Four points in front of Clarence, 11, 10, 76. And what a great goal by Peter Hudson. There you see him on the screen. Tremendous effort when they really needed to lift Glenorchy. He's given it to them. And anybody's game still. Either side would be unlucky to lose this game because they've thrown their heart and soul into it. And I think supporters of both sides can be proud of them. As Perfman comes through, there's the tap down. Going towards Robert Norris. Norris swings round. There's his kick. Nearly a mark there to Clarence Flores Chadwick. Across the boundary line for another throw in. 20 minute mark, last quarter, the Magpies four points up. Talking to the rebound. Talking and thumps down. Coming towards Bennett. Over the boundary line again. The Norky would be happy to keep it down there at uh, this stage, I think, because that clock is ticking away. Pilkington, off big tap. That's what the Magpies will be looking for over the boundary line. Pilkington using his big frame fit to perfection at the moment in the ruck. Stuart Bennett this time, bustling each other, down to Johnston, dispossessed, down to Holland, players falling on the ball, another bounce. Well, I tell you what's tiring out there for the players. It's tiring for the commentators. My word it is, this has been a hard game for all concerned, I can assure you. Here's the bounce, up by our Clements. The Magpies are in their attacking zone. There's Holland. In goes Gippard, a high tackle on Gippard, unlucky not to get a free kick there. Booted down towards the Clarence forward line. Rod Franks has taken a time saving moment. Be about, his, be about Rod Franks' first kick for the day. Here he is. Got a pretty good time to get him. Just over the half back line, taking that mark. Boots it to the torpedo, put up towards the centre wing. They appeal for the mark, punched on there by Bennett. It's on the centre wing, here's Holland. Kicking it up towards Hudson in the forward line. Leary trying to work his way forward. In desperation, falling forward. Forced over the line and out of bounds. Only four points the difference. Plenty of time left. We've played about 21 minutes. Still anyone's match. In goes Spalding. 
couldn't bring the ball away with him. It's handballed out. Here's Gippard. Can't pick it up. Gets it out to a teammate. Whistle is sound and a free kick. And Gippard, who's been a dasher all day, takes the kick back towards the centre. Danny Link. He could be awarded the mark. The blind side of the umpire. I think it might have been on the turf. I think it might have slipped out of his hand, Jess. But uh, as you said, the umpire right behind him and he couldn't see. Here's Ling's kick, high up towards the half forward line. Up goes Bennett, and Big Bennett has taken the mark on the chest. Stuart Bennett, anxious to get on with play as well. We'll have to use all his self and experience. A 15 metre penalty, and he's gone on with play. Good play by Bennett. The chances are coming up towards Van der Feen. Ling again takes the ball. Has his kick spoiled? The chance for McKay as he comes in. He puts it up towards the Gondorki backs. Coming out was Kelly. Martin after the ball. Picked up by Thurgood. Can he get clear? Play goes on. Grabbed. Players falling on the ball. I have never seen a more desperate grand final than this one. And the umpire is going to have a bounce. Half four line. Pounds in attack. Four points down. I have no doubt of the, uh, the replay tonight. It will be the last half. I should think so. As Pilkington gets the tap down to Giffard. is brilliant in this corner. Shane Giffard tries to screw the ball around. Goes to Moles. He doesn't know where to go with it. Gets cleared, tries to have a bounce. How silly can you be on a day like this? But it's desperation by John Miles. He tries to charge through. He's got the ball a bit further forward. A kick would have been better, but he's still there. And umpire Manson, I think, is going to have another bounce. He's certainly getting plenty of practice in bouncing. And those seconds are ticking away. We've played about 24 minutes. Here's the bounce. It's in the Ruse attacking zone. A defensive tap there by Cook. Chadwick's got it. Tries to burst his way through the pack. Can't do so. Rebounds off the body of uh, one or two players there, and it's out of bounds. Throw in again, front position to Pilkington. Pilkington goes the tap. Gippard again, backing out of the pack, goes for a hand pass. Here's uh, three or four Clarence players there. They can't get away in the ball. Held to him, says umpire Manson, and another bounce on the half forward line. I reckon John Pilkington will sleep well tonight. He's oh, well, ran on the ball all day, and then this, it gets pretty hard in conditions like this with so many bounces and throw ins. But he's put it out of bounds again. And the big fellow, he's not stopping. Chris Revolt and Pilkington. Pilkington in front. Taps it down. In the clear now. Coming through for Norky Studley. Caught. Coming through Franks. Franks getting the ball forward. Norris up high. Coming down. Coming in. Rolly Curley. Puts it over the boundary line. And out of bounds. And the Magpies are trying to stack the forward line. The Hudson's even down on the centre wing. Here's the throw in. Cooked it again. Gets it down to Mark Johnson. His kick goes high. There must be about 20 players there. Which one will it go? Oh, the tap goes straight to McCann. He's caught. Caught with the ball. Free kick. And Greg French, the Rue sentiment, will take the free kick. He'll kick long. A drop putt. Van der Feen is the target. Trying to get himself towards the front of the pack. Here's a chance for Kelly. In goes Lit. Courageous play by Lit. Boots it back towards McCann. He'll take... No, he doesn't. Drops what he should have taken. Picked up. It rebounds off the body there of a Glenorchy player. Here's Norris. Back over the shoulder. It'll be marked here. It has by Tyson. Tyson plays on quickly. In towards full forward. towards uh, Van der Feen. Oh, Robbie but Dykes. Dykes. He will never take a better mark for Glenorchy than that one. The Glenorchy skipper has taken a beautiful mark in the last line of defence with the clock showing 25 and a half minutes played and the Magpies are four points in front. A miraculous mark with a greasy ball by Dykes as he puts it up again towards Moles. Moles in front, he can't take it, kicked off the ground by Bennett. A chance for Van der Feen. Van der Feen, a hand pass over to Chadwick. Chadwick goes going and he's passed through. And the crowd goes wild. Chadwick has put it through. And the crowd... Oh, and if they win this game, they can certainly, well, he'll win a toast of the Eastern Shore. He'll certainly be the hero. What a hell of a to beat a hand pass. A magnificent, yes, a great hand pass by Van der Feen, but it wasn't a easy goal to get. And now it's going to be hard for Glenorchy to get back. Clarence, two points up. 26-minute mark of the last quarter. There's not much time left. Can the Roos hold out? Let's go up the centre-half four towards Hudson. He can't get it. Down to Bennett. Bennett running clear. Stop to Studley. Studley towards Norris. Oh, Norris takes the mark at centre half back. A great mark. Handball's on quickly to 
to trip it. He took it out of his hands, actually, trip it. <laughs> but Robin Norris will be in no hurry to get on with the game. He knows the rows are in front. And with minutes sticking by, seconds sticking by, he'll go long down the middle. There's the kick by Robin Norris. Down towards the half forward line. Chadwick is there. Flying high, trying to bring the ball in while he was a good hockey player. The Roos are desperate. They cycle it off the turf. Out towards the boundary line. But more importantly, it's over the boundary line in their attacking zone. Well, you must be uh, give the Roos full of credit. It's been a tremendous effort problem for the first bounce. They've played their hearts out. And so too are the Magpies. There's the tap back over the shoulder. The siren must be only seconds away. Handballed out. A chance now for uh, Garlic. On to his left foot, he kicks. He's put it through for a point. And the difference is now three points. Well, I've had a fair bit, uh, a fair few out of bounds, I guess, Mal. So the corner might go 30 minutes or more. But I think the North will have to go straight forward from this kick out, which is right down the middle if they don't have any chance. We'd had a strong mark from Clarence now to hold them up. And Rebolt nearly took it too. Umpire Barry Clemps is going to have a bounce. The Rose supporters are going mad with excitement. You can hear the deafening cheer of the crowd now as the parents are closing it. They're so sides with Sandy Bay and now he's come to Clarence and he's taken the lead to the grand final of the Premiership in his first year. And the Eastern Shore, they must all be here I'd say Bob because just have a look at the crowd that's on North Hobart Oval, it's teeming rain, it's bitterly cold and the wind blowing very strongly indeed but they've all gone out into the Oval to salute the tremendous effort put in by Noel Leary as captain and coach of the Clarence side, he's taken them from nothing to a Premiership in 12 months, a tremendous performance. Congratulations to Clarence. It is, it's a great uh, moment for them. It's their second premiership ever. Their only previous premiership was in 1970. And no one really, I, I don't think, expected them to win, or not many people expected them to win today, but they've come from nowhere. After Golovkin have been on top all year, and they've pulled it off, and pulled off a great run, probably one of the greatest wins they could ever have. And of course, there always must be a loser. Today, it's the Magpies full of credit to them. They fought it out to the last moment to have victory snatched from their grasp in the dying minutes of the game. Yes, they did. They uh, looked as though they were going to carry it out in the last quarter with that goal. Hand pass from Van Der Feen and the uh, goal by Chadwick has carried the day for them. And uh, Glorky have got every right to be very disappointed. I'm sure Jack Ruff is after coaching the side in, what, four consecutive, uh, three consecutive grand finals and losing every one. But... Uh, it's the day, it's the year of the rule again. They haven't won many, but when they do, they certainly make the most of them. You see this huge crowd here. I think most of them were behind Clarence, and now they're ecstatic. A sad day for Peter Hudson. He left the ground. Uh, he ran quickly to the dressing sheds.